Joe Weller. Hello. How Hi. are you? Yeah, not bad. Your most popular series, Internet Mounts. Mm. Like, how did how'd that come about? Mate, it was inspired by Jack, mate. Was, <laughs> was it? Straight up. Mate, uh, you're probably one of the only YouTubers that I watch. The last good video I felt like I made was about three or four years ago. Fuck. Fucking hating every minute of it. I meet Elliot in Starbucks. You didn't know him before that? No, no, no. He was, he was, a, he was a fan. Oh, wow. And he would write on my cup, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw him become someone I didn't like. Yeah. Pretty much. Like, very cocky, arrogant. Thought that the reason why he was big time was because of him. Mm. It's because he was in my video. I haven't spoke to him since the incident, um, obviously, where he rang up KSI. Obviously, we rush in there. The GoPro's got it on camera, like, and at the same time, the EMF meter, like, fucking pings off, going, like, and that goes off when apparently there's spirits about. Without a doubt, for me, there are spirits probably that can hear us right now. I believe. People always ask, do you fake stuff? Mm. And things like that. Um, I was continuing to live, go to Bali and all this stuff. And my bank balance was just going down and down. Mate, I got to a point where I, I barely could afford to live my lifestyle but I don't truly really know who I am right whereas I used to be so sure like I've got the potential like Logan Paul has mm. and I remember I made a video about it he was saying it's fake mate yeah I know yeah and I was literally like Jack mate fucking twat what are you on about <laughs> it was at that point that I was thinking you're sour whether it be my driving test my like playing football playing cricket I always bottled it growing up Anyway, so we're on this holiday, and Vic has got his, like, iPhone 57 out. Next thing you know, fucking... And then this guy's darting. He's, he's gone. He's off. And Vic, oh, bless him. He's like, no, come back. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you did your roast yeah. video. Yeah. Now, what, like, went through your head when you first watched my clip? For me, in terms of, like, the whole fighting thing, what... Do you think if you won, you'd be in a different position? Probably. Wow. Hmm. Hello guys, welcome back to Jack Mate's Happy Hour. I'm joined again, as always, by Doody R <laughs> <laughs> We're also joined by Joe Weller. Hello. How Hi. are you? Yeah, not bad. You are great to be in London. You are our most requested guest ever. Really? Comments after comments. That and Doody Rhino, basically. I'd love it. Would you, would you ever get Doody Rhino on? Yeah, he's always welcome on. Whenever. We're still pals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's joining the fans. Yeah. He's... I think Joe's seen the memes and he's seen like people like tweet me all the fucking time asking where he is. He's just we're just two different people swimming in different lakes, baby. <laughs> 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 right, right, Joe. We yes, always mate. ask our guests the same thing. No uh, deal. Oh, he's done, he's done his research. <laughs> he knows. Just straight in. What is it? What should go to? So meal I'd go a little bit Tory, right? <laughs> M and S. <laughs> It was straight into m and Showing his true colours here. Uh, <laughs> and we're getting a ham, cheese and pickle sandwich. Wow. Yeah. Right. So that's what we're going for. And then probably <laughs> some more... No, more it's uh, m and own salt and vinegar crisps. Okay. What is that? That Chardonnay vinegar? Yeah, like all of that bollocks. And then <laughs> probably a grenade protein bar. Yeah, because you're... Hang on. Well, two snacks... No, you can get that, can't you? That's M and S. You do what you it's want. M and S. That's a ten pound meal deal as well, so you're allowed that. <laughs> no, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, How much not, is it? It's not. It's got to be like what seven quid. It is no, expensive. I don't know. It's it's, yeah, it's a bit extortionate. And then I'd probably get water on top just because. I you know. I did uh, yeah I brought some waters in and then um we were going it's through the Twitter yeah we we're going through the Twitter questions and mm. I realised that it wasn't Buxton what is that because I've I've been I've been a fan of you for years and I've seen the whole Buxton army and stuff but where what's the origin story behind that mate literally it all started where I was you know I used to do FIFA videos right back it yeah back yeah. then um I scored a goal on FIFA and literally had a bottle of Buxton next to me and I was like yeah it's because of the good stuff it's because you know and I blamed it all on this that I was actually good. Uh, in a game, and that was literally it. And people like loved it. They were like, "Yeah, I want to get smashed on Buxton as well." <laughs> I was like, yeah, fucking so do I. And then we just, yeah, it just it sort of took off. I guess any of my sort of like catchphrases or you know the legitimate and all that shit, mm. it's always just sort of happened accidentally. I've never really like, yeah, gone. You know what? I'm gonna start a thing here, like you with the the old brie and honeycomb and all of that. It's sort of you know, <laughs> yeah, it sort of just took off. So 
Yeah, that's pretty much where that came from. You just you just find a way to monetize these things sometimes. <laughs> but that's the thing. Did like you that. did you monetize? You had t-shirts once, Stickman mm. t-shirts, didn't you? Was... Smashed on Buxton. Yeah. Yeah, literally, like <clears throat> all of that took off. But like, if I tried to formulate, uh, like, no, yeah, like I guess plan something like that now, mm. I, I feel like it would be so almost more forced. Whereas then, because it happened so naturally. It was like, yeah, it just it sort of took off. It was very organic. You, so. can, you can kind of tell when someone's trying to like. You can't just make a catchphrase, really, can mm. you? Mm. And unless you're that way inclined. But like, like Stephen tries his 016 one. Like that was just so organic, so fucking funny. But I, I'm surprised he hasn't monetized it yet. To be yeah. fair, but I'm glad you know about my um, honeycomb on the brie kind of thing. It's decent. I like, mate. I, you're probably one of the only YouTubers that I watch. Oh really? Mm. Wow. Straight up, because like, there's just that level of authenticity. Mm. I feel like, yeah, you want to maintain that level of being who you are. Yeah, for not sure. Not being YouTube Jack or like a different Jack or whatever. Like you are just, tr you try to be you and like, that's what I rate and that's what comes across on camera for me. Oh, nice one. So, I, I, I yeah. do feel like I fell into the trap um, for a little while of like, so way back when, like making videos, slagging someone off. Mm. And then like I fell into the trap of, Oh, people like this. Mm. So I'm just going to do this on steroids sort of thing, like te mm. on times 10. And then you, you you, give the people what you think they want, but by doing that, you're going further and further away from what you want to make. Do you know what I mean? And then you end up just re resorting to like form and just yeah. doing the same thing over and over again. Like your your most popular series, Internet Mounts, mm. like how did how'd that come about? Because... You've always seen somebody like seen you're you're quite a friendly character on yeah. YouTube, but that is quite like a, a bit of a jackmate type thing. Yeah. Like, mate, it was inspired by jackmate. Was it? Was it? Straight up. Like it was. I can't like, tell if he's joking. No, 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 I can't. No, I'm being deadly serious. So you used to make like things everybody hates or whatever. Mm, was mm, it? Yeah. Mm. I was literally like, right, I'm gonna take this, but do it about things I find on the internet. Wow. So I was literally like, honestly, mate. Uh, and basically from there, like that. That actual first one was a, oh, I haven't got a video this week. I'm just going to fucking try this. Yeah. It wasn't like a, this is going to be a banging series. This is going to, like, nah. It was just, let's give this a go, see what happens. Little four minute video. And just people loved it. Yeah. Like, it was just, but it was on paper, bullying. Right. Like, that's exactly, you know, that's what it was. It was. <laughs> <fucking brilliant. laughs> it was. Yeah. And yeah, there, there's always been that thing of like, you know, I like, building people up and making people feel like they, you know, they mental health and all of that. Mm. And then I've got this series that tears people down. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that sort of like contradicts it itself like massively. And but yeah, it that's was, always been a thing. It's a hard one because I guess you are right when you say it's, well, I, I wouldn't class it as bullying, but I completely get why you would say it mm. is. But it's just, how, you were doing it in a very harmless kind mm. of way. Like someone spells washing machine wrong and you go washing machine. Yeah. You're not yeah, actually yeah. going like a, a 2016 Jack mate might have gone. Look at this fucking cunt. Rah, 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 yeah. rah. Well, that's the thing. Like back then, like was that 20, 2014, something like that. It was uh, everything was a lot more tolerated, wasn't it? Like, yeah. You could make a joke about things and it be a joke. Yeah. Like whereas now, I take the piss out of someone typing something and it's like, oh, you don't know if they've got dyslexia. Yeah. Or you don't know if they've got a condition. I don't know. And yeah, it, it ends up being a bit more... It's a hard one, but then where the fuck do you draw the line? I know. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, my my most popular video ever is obviously just ripping Zoella's advent calendar. Yeah. But, like, imagine if... That like, is bullying. Well, well, hang on. Well, hear it this way, yeah. So imagine if one day it comes out, oh, she's actually on the autistic spectrum, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> why are you bullying an autistic yeah, kid? they could say, why are you Adult. bullying an autistic kid? And I was like, I weren't bullying an autistic kid. Yeah. I was taking the piss but out no, of the product. But no, because that's different, yeah. 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 I don't know when was the last time you did an internet melt. So I know you did a summer version. Mm. Was that last year? Yeah, it was last summer. So would you do another episode of that again? Honestly, mate, the past four episodes have been the most forced videos I've ever made in my life. Really? Probably about like a total of 20 hours of filming each one. Fuck. fucking hating every minute of it purely doing it because this is what the people want mm. this is joe weller and that video, video i made like recently yeah where i was sort of like breaking down and, and you know just saying look i'm trying to be like how joe weller is meant to be rather than being like my actual self mate it's been yeah that's what sort of i've been doing over the past like few years to be honest wow like, it's been quite toxic when you yeah, because when you said that, I texted you the other day and was saying like not to lick your ass, but I don't think there's another YouTuber that I've related to more mm. because people often I hate to bring it back to me again, but like people often thought that I was this little like 
rat that was like, oh, I'm going to jump on everything. Mm. And like, like I said to you before on the podcast, the reason why Alex isn't on here anymore is yeah. because he was... It, this is like kind of like, especially with you and Waffling, you use it as a bit of like a therapy session in a way. Yeah, yeah. You come and you talk about how you feel and you have a laugh with your mates. Mm. Alex, bless him, we're nothing against him, but he'd come on and he'd talk about all these little things that these YouTubers have done. Tana Mojo's done this. Jake Paul's done this. And at first, fair enough, that's what we branded the podcast as. Yeah, yeah. But when I realised, actually, I'm not really about that. Like now, like I'll take the piss out of YouTubers, but I'm almost memeing myself and memeing the calendar thing. I can't, I can't jump on like, oh, James Charles has just fucked up on a makeup thing. Like you'll get a million views if you do that. I... People subscribe to my channel because they know that's the kind of stuff I do. So I'm exactly like, you know, I'm in two minds. If I wanted to now, I could leave here today, make a video about a YouTuber fucking up and bang a million views. Yeah. But really, I'd prefer just to get Alfie and do a fucking piss take comedy song about KSI. Sure. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? So it's hard. What but does the views get to you? They do get to me. Mm. And I wish they didn't. Yeah. Because that's that's exactly where I'm at. Like, you know, like you've just said, in terms of I could do a video titled Internet Mounts 10. Yeah. I'm getting a million views in the quickest time. Yeah. And that feeds that boom, that like, yes, okay, we're on it. But yeah, it's doing something that I don't want to do. Mm. Uh, and it's that that sort of constant battle. Like YouTubers, are, you know, any, every established YouTuber you ask, they've probably had that same battle. Mm. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm at a point now like yourself where I, I, I'm almost wanting to prioritize my own brain in mm. what I make because that's the only way I'm going to have like longevity and consistency with it yeah because if it takes so much like mental you know forcing it and stuff to get one video out I feel like I need like fucking three weeks to fucking simmer down <laughs> yeah, afterwards yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean and that's not healthy yeah like it, you know especially where video you know video making started as just a pure passion mm. yeah. and to see that passion go away from me and me now resenting the process is horrible yeah like how, when I look at that how much of your videos or that say like internet melts how yeah. much of that is or that how much is joe weller on screen like joe weller off screen waffling really waffling that is that's me being like around my you know with my mates just being like a bit of a weirdo yeah um and i found as i'm getting older that's sort of like the content say like right now where it's not like right we've got 10 seconds to get this clip and it's got to be all choppy that that I've, I've almost like grown out of that and it's more like this long form content where we can sit and actually have real conversations and be like our real selves yeah that's what i enjoy more right and through enjoying it more like it's turning out making better content more like engaging content like people come up come up to me now and say i love your podcast they yeah don't go, i love your videos yeah it's like my podcast is sort of like becoming my main thing now yeah and when people say that to me on on a night out i love that like yeah. that's more of a buzz to me than someone going yeah. i love that time you said like oh you've done the calendar i was like Oh, but it's not really me. I'd rather you love the podcast and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, I get yeah. proper a buzz off of yeah, that. Yeah, it's mate. It's actually mad. Like whenever people say about like my videos, oh yeah, I've been watching your videos recently. Like I'm almost like, don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, genuinely, mate. Like don't like, because yeah, the last good video I felt like I made was about three or four years ago. Like Whoa. in my mind, like that. And I know that sounds weird. Even my last video, mate. Like I look at that and I'm like, not fully like, yeah, it's really, weird, mate. I've genuinely, I've actually, I've seen myself. I've, I've got a bit of a problem. Wow. With, it, with the whole YouTube thing, it's, it's become very toxic for me. What? So, because sorry, mate, your, your your last video was the one where you sort of like turned your hometown into like a holiday resort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that was a sick video, and I thought that was shot really nice. Yeah. And like as you said, the views aren't like a million, mm. like what an internet melts would get. Mm. So if that video would say it had banged, yeah, got like five million, would you have a different opinion on it? Would you be sat there thinking I'm proud of that video? There were Let's see, that's where it's a bit toxic. Yeah, because like I probably would have more of a yeah, yeah, I would. But at the same time, like my obsession is, mate, I want to make funny videos as well. Mm. Like the I haven't made a funny YouTube video fucking ages. I like, disagree so. though, because I think you're I think you only think you're funny when you're playing up to the Joe character stereotype, where I think as somebody who's watched you for years, and I know Alfie is a big fan of you as well. You're funny with your little mannerisms and stuff. So before you came in today, mm. I, Alfie was sat there and we were going through some of the questions and he can do a decent impression of you. <laughs> and like, get him in. <laughs> he, he just went, uh, no, Theo. And he just done this, this voice. And it was like, <laughs> that's like, so when we watch Waffling, what I'm trying to say is, that's when we find you the funniest. But that's what I'm saying. Like Waffling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm the, so not Waffling. That's obviously the podcast separate thing. But mm. like, I'm happy with that mm. as it is. I'm talking like videos. Like yeah. I made a funny video where I feel like I'm being 
100% authentic. Right. So do you not find yourself funny then? Well, on waffling, I, I can appreciate, yeah, like, I've, done, I've done well now. You know, we've made some funny sort of like whatever moments. Yeah. But yeah, in terms of like when it's me and the camera and not my mates around, like it's like I get zapped but that's, energy, mate. That's a difference of being able to bounce off of someone. But then also <laughs> you're getting that appreciation straight away like if i say something to make jack laugh i know i've done something funny but your camera is never going to laugh back at you but yeah the thing why I, w- I was i used to be able to do it but, i used to be able to be on you know with that camera on my ones and but, feel that vibe whereas now it's like now nah, i can only really do it with people but was that because you were getting all of that appreciation from those melts videos nah, but you've started to resent that no no not, not even it wasn't like oh i know the comments are gonna be whatever it's all it's almost it almost feels like I've grown out of the ability to film solo. Mm. Whereas when I was younger, I could never film with people. Right. If the cameras were rolling right now and I'm like 17 years old, I'm bricking it. I can't get my words out. I can't probably look you in the eye. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and now it's almost like flipped. Yeah. Which is like cool because, okay, I'd rather be, you know, start working with other people and grow that sense rather than only film on my own. Yeah. But it is a bit frustrating when you're like, how have I gotten older yet gotten worse at an ability that I used to have? I just think you've, as you've got older, you've matured and you've set better mm. standards for yourself. So like now, yeah. if you were to go, for example, wash a machine, you might go, I don't find that funny. Mm. Whereas 17 year old Joe might have found that funny. Yeah. And then you accept lesser standards, I yeah. think. But at the same time, it, the difficulty as well is when the viewers mm. they loved that old Weller. Yeah, that's what they want. It's that age-old question: popularity versus integrity. Do you stay true to what yeah. you want to do and lose the views, or do you yeah. go out there and get the views? What do you yeah. think? What do you think you're gonna do? At the moment, I'm literally focused on waffling. Yeah, and I literally my main channel is almost like that's my money maker. Yeah, because waffling doesn't really turn over anything. Right. Whereas, like you know, my main channel, I get quite a lot of brand deals come through. Mm. Um and but then again, that's another thing where it's like, mate, people won't stick around if all you do is branded shit. Yeah, it's a weird do one I mean? because I, I think people are more accepting of it now. Like, yeah. I think I think they kind of ex- expect it. So, like, I get monetized all the, uh, demonetized all yeah. the time. Got a video going out on the day of recording now that's meant to be monetized, uh, meant to be monetized, and it's not. And that's got a brand deal in it. Mm. And, like, I don't want to post it, especially now after speaking to you and you saying about it, how it affects the reach. Like, yeah. I don't care about the money, the revenue aspect, because there's a brand deal in it anyway. Mm. So I'll, I'll earn a, a good amount anyway. Yeah. But, but when I posted saying, guys, I'm not going to upload this until it gets monetized, Pete, and then I put in brackets at the end, I was like, this isn't about the money. They're like, fuck off, fuck off. It's, it is about the money. It's like, it's not, because I'm getting the, the brand deal money anyway, but I want to get the, the reach out there. So I think the proof is in the pudding. I would rather a million views and it be demonetized than 300k and it be monetized, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you rather? Well, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, because essentially your video gets more views on paper when it's more entertaining, right? Mm. People are sharing it, people are all of that. It's like a direct like, sort of indication of how good the video is. Mm. Or is it? Mm. Or is it that there's a certain type of video that does well on YouTube? Mm. Like, everyone's got a different opinion. And like you're saying about people, no matter what you write, there are still people saying, fuck off, Jack, you're fucking money grabbing, like, whatever. Mm. Like, that's the other thing. You, you're never going to be able to, like, uh, what's the word? Please everyone. Please everyone. That's mm. the one. YouTube comments overall. And my YouTube audience, like my waffling audience, I know I can visualize who they are. Yeah. My main channel, I don't really know who's watching. That's a good way and to put so it. That's weird. That is a good way to put because it. Because I, I look down that lit, like well, I could be sat here, if I pick up the camera knowing, uh, knowing I'm speaking to the waffling audience, mm. boom, I feel comfortable. I feel like I'm talking to my friend. Mm. If I pick it up knowing I'm talking to my main channel, it just, it, something comes over me. I like, I don't feel as like, confident in yeah. a way with it, which is fucked up. Like, no, it that? makes sense because the, the people that have followed you over to waffling must have been a fan of you to mm. follow you over rather than just a fan of that niche series on your channel. Mm. So it's, it, I, I reckon there's people that watch me just hoping that I'm going to slag off Zoella again because yeah. they've seen that one advent calendar video. Yeah. Whereas like, it's actually more of a pat on the back to me when people like the podcast because yeah. we just sit here and talk. So if they're a fan of your podcast, you know they're a fan of you rather yeah. than Joe Weller, the performer. Yeah. yeah. On Waffling, the audience is a lot smaller. Yeah. But, each of those viewers I know are like they're true fans and they're true supporters and they're you know mm. all of that. Whereas you could have yeah my main channel which is much bigger, more you know subscribers, but 
feeling like it's a lot more like just face value and they're, you know, they're maybe just after, they only want to watch because they want to laugh at what something that they don't actually give a fuck about me. Yeah. You know, maybe, you know, realistically, I'm not as, you know, I prefer the idea of connecting people more on a level like I do with waffling yeah. than that concept on the main channel. A spot on. Do you think there's any way to have both anyway? Like you're you're not Jack mate on here. No. You're you're just Jack on here. Mm. And I, I'm not sure. I can't think of any YouTubers really that can be themselves and be massive. Like KSI's crazy on his channel. But even but when like, he was but, here, uh, I found him way calmer. At the same calmer. time, on his like second channel now, he's mellowed out a lot. Now. Yeah, on his second channel now, like if he. You know, I've seen him watch a video and not find anything funny. Yeah. Like, oh, we, we fucking felt that, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, recently. Yeah, literally. Like, but you can see that he's just a lot more like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. But I'm that's because gonna... he's hit a point. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. until you hit that point, like, you're, you're still, you still need that payday. He doesn't. Mm. He yeah. doesn't mm. need YouTube, really. No. He's but, just doing it and he can do what he wants. Whereas you, you're not in that position. I think as well, what, I, what I'm trying to say about your podcast because mm. I listen to your podcast and I really like it yeah. and I listen to True Geordie's podcast and I really like it and I get on with Brian and I get on with you I think when you came when you come like when you come and you quote with the podcast at the start yeah I'm like oh Buzz and he likes the podcast yeah. right? I'd much rather you like the podcast than the videos because that is me right yeah. and me and Alfie have this thing where now he's come on my channel and we're taking the piss out of people in a yeah. more of a comedic way. Yeah. So like when we went to um, the fight, the Miami, um, Jake Paul Gibb, and we tried to kiss Greg Paul, right? And that was my whole video, just trying to kiss Greg Paul. A lot of people didn't get that, right? Yeah. And it's like, we're taking the piss out of him being a creep around girls, right? So, yeah. so the joke is that we've pushed it to the nth degree, that we've traveled all the way to America to try and kiss this guy. And then this brings us on to my my last video where we did a comedy song trying to get in to the side men, and I did a whole like serenade to JJ, and it's really weird because he didn't he didn't like it. That made sideways this is fire. Wait, what? I'm Was that a cardboard cow? Wait, what? Ah, right, this is very painful to listen to. I, I, <laughs> this ain't a Simon. This this is a. Simon <laughs> serenade. I don't know if you saw it, but he yeah, watched it. Reaction, uh, yeah, yeah. And, he, and he didn't like it, and he binned it off. And this is going to sound like I'm being really bitter. I'm not. I just want to say I fucking love KSI as a content creator, right? He's an inspiration and probably a reason that we're sat here. Do you know what I mean? Like I know, I know for a fact that I watched him before I did it. He is great. I don't find him funny, right? I don't find him funny. I'll, I'll watch some of his Reddit videos and some of the stuff he laughs at. I think like a kid would laugh at, right? And I'm not trying to throw him under the bus. I like him. So when he didn't like that video, it, to me, it was a, well, do you know what, I'd much rather you get it or I'd much rather Robbie Knox get it or Stevie yeah. get it than, than that. And that's not me. So I think what I'm trying, I'm kind of lost my train of thought here, but what I'm trying to say is there's people that you can see and respect for different reasons. I've always respected your humor, your personality, whereas I, I respect JJ's success and the way he's molded, uh, he's molded it. So as I've got older, I don't want to cast a large net anymore and get, I I'd much rather five views like the content, five mm. Robbie Knoxes, five Alfies. Yeah. Than, than well, that's exactly what you were saying about you prefer the audience technically to Wafflin. Yeah. If that was bigger, it would be great because you know that type of person. Yeah, mm. if they're getting waffling, you know they get you. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what yeah, you're trying right to say, up. and that's what I'm kind of saying. People were messaging me about the KSI thing, and oh, he's mugged you right off. I don't care. I don't care. It was a comedy song where I was like basically trying to bum the side men. Do you know what I mean? So when people get happy hour, when people get waffling, you know they're the ones. Yeah, you know they're the ones that you can relate to. Whereas if you wanted somebody to get a Joe Weller internet melts video you know what joke you've got to kind of write and you're playing into their hands rather than just being yourself. For real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, with that, I think I can't see me doing any more internet melts type stuff. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, what? Like, I really do want to find something that I am like, boom, this is the YouTube video that I want to make. Because mm. I ain't felt like that, yeah, like I say, in about three years. Wow. Like, where it, since I did the Exploring series. Yeah. That was so organic. I did not have to try, like with internet melts when I first started doing it, didn't have to try... It was just like, this feels like natural. And I know I'm making fire here. Like, I know this is sick. How did that come about? What, the exploring? Yeah, what was the first one? So, you... obviously, I meet Elliot in Starbucks. Yeah. And then I'm like, quite a, at quite a low point, to be fair. And I'm like, mate, yeah, don't know what I'm going to do with YouTube. Don't know what videos I want to make, blah, blah, blah. Oh, hang on. So, because I, I knew he worked in Starbucks. Yeah. You didn't know him before that? No, no, no. He was, he was, a, he was a fan. 
Oh, wow. And he would write on my cup, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and things. And I was like, oh, okay, he knows, he knows. And then obviously, you know, we started chatting. Uh, he took me on a date. And then, <laughs> and then, no, 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 but yeah, basically like. What, did he write his number on the cup? <laughs> Call me. No, he wrote his, uh, <laughs> he did ask me to watch a singing cover that he did. Oh. Of a Drake song. Right. And I remember watching it and thinking, right, okay, there's there's two things here. Either he's trying to become friends with me so that I promote his shit. Yeah. Or he's just being nice. Yeah. Anyways. So we, uh, yeah, he then suggested this idea of going to his old primary school to explore it for a video. And I was like, mate, dead vid. What are you on about? <laughs> going to a shit primary school. So at this like, point, you're, you're good pals now. Well, at this point, uh, yeah, yeah, we're still getting to know each other in terms of like, as mates, like he seems safe, he seems funny, yeah, like we yeah. have a laugh and a joke, and yeah. it's like, you know, he gets me on a YouTube level in terms of like, he, I, I could just tell basically, he could see how I was feeling, and he had creative ideas that, you know, let's give it a go, yeah, yeah. sort of thing. So yeah, the exploring was something that I didn't believe in at first, but I thought, let's do it, got nothing to lose. Mm. Obviously, and this went against everything I've done in the past, i.e. filming quite raw. Yeah. Because my thing, like I said, off camera, I was like, you know, it's always been very chop choppy to the point, editing, you know, fast. And this exploring, he was like, mate, look, trust me, film it really like raw. Don't over edit it because it makes it more like suspense and all of that. And I was mm. like, all right, sick. Anyway, so yeah, we film it and it, and it goes well, like things happen. It's funny. And it banged. What, the, what was the first one? Where, Exploring that primary school. Oh, primary school, school yeah, right. His, his old primary school. And it absolutely banged. Everyone's like, please make a series out of it. And, you know, yeah, it got like, what, five mil views, like, very quickly. Wow. What, what, what happened in the video? I can't remember each one. Oh, from... it was like we encountered a horse and then we, in, you know, the building. I think at this point, obviously, exploring videos weren't big on YouTube. So the idea of seeing a creepy abandoned building was there was a bit of a wow factor about it. Yeah. Whereas, obviously, now you do one and it's like, uh, there's no there's it's got no whoa because everyone's fucking rinsed it yeah um but at that point yeah no one had really seen that sort of stuff so for us to go in a building like that when it's so like fucking that is nowhere you ever want to go mm. that was sick and it got the viewers like very engaged like the retention on the video was sick like everyone would watch all the way through were they proper long form bits of content? yeah it'd be like 15 minutes yeah. 10 15 20 i think we did one but um yeah so they banged and then obviously yeah we we did them as much as we could and then naturally it sort of got to a point where right we've exhausted that now and how, how many did you do must have done about 10 fuck must have done was about you, 10 was you traveling all up and down the country doing yeah it? mate yeah what we, was what was the scariest like place to go or the scariest thing that happened oh uh, mate it's probably like i mean mm, some like hospitals that are massive videos that didn't even go out so like a lot of them a lot, you know people always ask do you fake stuff mm. and things like that um never because like i'm just as interested about like ghosts and all that stuff as anything and like i was saying about the whole you know i need to do my videos for me mm. not just to make good content like that's where i had a good balance because i wasn't pretending to be someone i wasn't i was just being legit and being real and having a laugh yeah, yeah. and having a laugh so it was you know it was a good little formula and yeah, things did happen, like obviously with the Ouija board and you know, there was one place we went into where we get up we get we got there, the fire alarm went off. The fire brigade came and we're like, Yeah, this this has never happened. What in a slight an abandoned So this one wasn't abandoned. Right. But the the fire alarm went off. Uh yeah, they they came and were like, Yeah, nothing this has never happened. Um, nothing's caused this. We do the Ouija board and it spells out fire. What? And at this point, like my stepdad was slightly had he had quite a hard grip on it, but we were like, surely he's not. Why would he do this? Like he would, you know. I had my family there, yeah, for that exact reason, so no one does any like bollocks. Right. So who was it in the video? You, me, Crawford, my sister, my mum, and my stepdad. Right. And we're doing this Ouija board in this haunted manner. And and you're pretty certain no one would, no one would, no move one it. would fuck around. And even if you did try and push it, like if you got five people with their finger on it, like it would start, you know, where where there's pressure from, you know, either side, it would start doing like... Spin rounds. Yeah, whereas yeah. this thing was moving like that. Oh, shit. This thing was moving like proper... And it spelled out fire, leave, go. Anyways, in that area of the manor, apparently back in the day, there was a fire that killed people. Wow. And that was like, yeah, that was one of the most like mental moments that I've had. If I was doing like, it with like, so, like one of my mates and that happened, mm. I would like be... 
99 percent sure that they were pushing it but mm. as you say you were doing it with your family yeah. who like you probably well, like people say oh yeah like oh apparently it's scientifically proven that ouija boards are bollocks but then i'm like I, that, i'm like okay but how did that happen they you know that video that i did i will never be able to explain that is that the scariest and as thing well, that's happened oh, fucking hell something else that happened that, that really proved it for me my latest my most recent ever exploring vid we set up a bear that has a like alarms in it. So if, if you touch it or go near it, it goes beep and lights up, right? And we leave it in the most haunted room of this haunted inn. Right. And um, we say like, oh, spirits, like, please grab it. You know, all that bollocks. <laughs> Anyways, just as we, are, we leave the room, shut the door, lock it, fucking goes off. Like goes off for like a prolonged like eight second period. Obviously, we rush in there. The GoPro's got it on camera, like, and at the same time, the EMF meter, electromagnetic field meter, like, fucking pings off, going, brrr, like, and that goes off when apparently there's spirits about. So, yeah, that was it. And it was like, wow, fuck me. Okay. Anyways, we decide, right, this is, you know, we need this to happen again. It needs to happen more than once. So we leave it set up on the bed again, leave, go down to dinner, obviously leave cameras rolling, literally like 25 minutes in, goes off again. What the and fuck? the only way to go to, for the, to set this thing off is if you touch it, is if you grab it. What, so it's a little thing that you had made up, or it's like it's yeah, it's made by like ghost hunting people, right. like especially like it's put sensors all over the bear, like it's a little cuddly bear, yeah, and they put sensors all over its body, so that if yeah anything grabs it from any angle, it goes off. And that for me, that was like, well, that's that's it. What yeah, what? How can you explain that? Yeah, that you you did, can't. Did you have to proper touch it, or can you just brush it? You have to, yeah, you have to. Like, so a, wi to a, like a wind wouldn't br be able to do no it. No wind. Bear in mind all the windows are shut. It's, this isn't a ba an abandoned building either. This is just a haunted active inn that's still operational and that is like certified. Like they are like, yeah, well, yeah. They're, the stories that are at this place are like not just told by one person sort of thing. It's like this is quite an active place. That is mad. I don't it? know what I'd do. Because I'm very much, anytime anything like that happens yeah. for me, my brain automatically goes, there's a reason. Like, well, yeah. I cannot well, accept that's what we anything. Were doing. That's what we were doing. We were like, well, this, no, there's got to be something. There's got to be. We tested everything. We got the fucking bear. We, you know, see what, what was around. I mean, we made sure this, that there was nothing that could interfere with this. And the fact you had the bear and the electromagnetic field meter going yeah. off at the same time. Well, and that was in a, that was in an, in an inn that that room wasn't in use. No, no, the room was in use. Right. But that was that was their allegedly one of well, one of their most haunted rooms. It was the Elizabethan chamber. That's mad. So yeah. I assume you're a heavy believer. Not a heavy in... believer. I try to be very realistic with it. Like if it's if something's bollocks, it's fucking bollocks. And a lot of people. That's the other thing that has like ruined our credibility because obviously we have never faked anything. Yeah. But what did it, what has everyone else done? Faked it. Yeah. Because they they saw obviously you know we started banging views with the exploring vids. And then you got old, like, you know, a lot of the American YouTubers jumping on it and all of that. And they all faked it. Yeah. People even went into the mental asylum that we did our thing at and started faking things. Uh, and then it just, yeah, that that then obviously like ruined any credibility that we sort of had in the eyes of a lot of the audience. So you never like added anything in turn, no. uh, like even in terms of like throwing a stone down a corridor or. No, mate, see, like, that's the thing. Like, fuck that. Yeah. Fuck anyone that does that, that like I say, it just ruins the credibility credibility yeah, of it. For sure. Like those people are obviously just doing it to try and bang views, whereas me and me and Elliot had a genuine interest in wanting to like fucking prove shit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So That's mad. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Harwich Fort? No. We went to we had these ghost hunters get in touch and they took me and Jordan to um this fort at night time. They were proper like ghost hunters. That's how yeah. they make their money. And we went and we had the whole night there from like nine yeah. until like three in the morning. And the scariest thing that happened was right at the start of the evening. So mm. you walk in, and it's like this courtyard, like this round courtyard. And each courtyard's got these different things in the room. So one will have some like old bunk beds. One will have like some mannequins, which are fucking shit scary at night time. Yeah. And I, I, I very much went in as like, I don't believe in any of this shit at all. But the weirdest thing was the camera. You remember me telling yeah. you about the camera? So that was weird. So she, this, this lady... Bear in mind, we've since, like, everything else that happened on that night was bollocks. You could tell that they were trying to fake it and stuff. Yeah. And uh, w when we came away, we did a podcast about it, and they basically tried to sue us for, like, fucking them up. But the weirdest thing that happened was we, she said that sometimes the footage goes a bit funny, and I just had a little Canon G7X. So I was like, how is the footage ever going to go funny? I've filmed on this loads of times. She was like, oh, maybe it's the spirits, not what I was like, all right, maybe it is, I don't know. <laughs> and we set up in the middle of this courtyard, we stood one end, and then in the middle is this 
green electricity box and it's like slanted up like that so say it was like say you're you're there the box is like this right so yeah. i set the camera up filming us and it's like slanted up almost at the sky yeah so i'm like trying to get it to like point down anyway i go back i thought it's just a bit of b-roll of just us stood there so we stood there talking and it was like getting dusk so i was feeling a little bit spooked yeah and um after about five minutes we just hear this smash I was like, what the fuck? And I look, and my camera's my camera's on the floor. But I shit you not, mate, it's fallen over that way. And it's like that. So it's quite windy in there, but the slant is going up, and it's fallen over the slant. So I, I put it back on the box, and I'm like, well, surely it would go that way, because it was a bit wet as well. Yeah. But how's it going to go that way? And I, I get behind it, and I'm going... <sighs> trying to blow it i can't move it and there's no way that heavy camera can get over and it was recording and it was recording for about five minutes and i thought anytime it's recorded before and the camera stopped it's kept the bit of footage that was already on there so i was like let's see what happens on the camera i went and there was nothing on there was no footage on on the whole memory card on the whole memory card. On the whole memory card, mate. Because Jordan had another camera, and you can see in the video because it's being—I I promise you, yeah—it's being filmed by this big, big camera that Robbie Knox had. And I'm like, there, I'm like, how can? Because the camera had broke. So I was like, how can I play the footage back? I need to see it. And then Fiona goes, Jordan's got the same camera. Put the memory card in. I'm like, oh yeah, obviously. So I take it out. I put it in. I'm like, Jordan, how do you get this to play on your thing? So it's exactly the same camera. I'm like, don't know, how to get it to play. And then I'm like, there's, n- there's nothing. There's on no there. clips on there. What the fuck? So it's mad. Mm. There's got to be. In, there's got to be like a, a reason for it. But this is the thing. It's always there's always that element of just it's unexplainable, but it's not a hundred percent a ghost. Mm, yeah. So everything. Every time it's like, well, there's got to, there's got to be a reason, you know. And that's yeah. That's the sort of like I guess interest about it that mm. it is so like there's got to be something. There's been so much evidence, so many stories. Like why w- everyone's not just made it up. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So do yeah, you do you believe right. in ghosts? I believe in spirits 100%. Yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, I don't know how they like the whole like seeing a ghost. I mean, I don't know about that, but without a doubt for me there are spirits probably that can hear us right now. I believe. That's a strange I, thought. I believe. <laughs> I believe that probably probably all over the gaff. I I reckon so. Really? Because whenever we've done anything as well, like say like the Ouija board stuff mm. or, you know, contacting whoever, it's not always been necessarily someone that's died in the room that's come through. Right. So someone, it might be someone someone's random. Someone's, un, someone's brother that died as they were being born allegedly mm. came through. Well, you, and this is the thing, a lot of it has got to be down to trust that someone's not having you on. Yeah. Because that does happen. Yeah. Without a doubt. Um, but yeah, basically I've experienced, I've been in the presence of times where people, people have come through that have no reason to necessarily be in that specific place. Mm. But yeah, it makes you think like where, if there are spirits, where do they go? Where do they chill out? Like what is, (laughs) you know what I mean? So I don't know, but it is interesting. Yeah. Fair. And then you, you mentioned Crawford. Mm doesn't make video from one ghost town to another really like he doesn't make um content anymore no abandoned youtube channel <laughs> anyways do a video joe weller exploring that but uh do you speak to him i haven't spoke to him since the incident um obviously where he rang up ksi to... yeah i thought I, I will admit yeah back in the day when i when i was listening to that so yeah. for anyone do- doesn't know, this is your mate that you got from Starbucks. He became a YouTuber. <laughs> he uh, got from Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, he picked him up at Starbucks. Uh, he became a YouTuber. You were about to fight KSI yeah. in the first boxing match. We'll speak to. We'll speak about that in the second half of the show. But Elliot called him up and basically want uh, just said, "I hope you knock Joe out." Basically, mm-hmm. something along them lines. I would have bet my house. And I don't have a house, but if I had one, I'd bet it on the fact that that was staged. But clearly, three years on now, whatever it is, it wasn't, was it? No. Uh, what happened? So that was pretty much uh, the, what would you say, like the the climax mm. of a series of events. Right. Basically, I noticed the Elliot that I met in Starbucks, humble, normal guy, as I thought. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My throat just went... <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, basically over an amount of time of, you know, I don't know whether it be the the followers, the success, the attention, 
I just saw him become someone I didn't like. Yeah. Pretty much. Like, very cocky, arrogant. F- thought that the reason why he was big time was because of him. Mm. It's because he was in my video. Yeah. And I'm, that's not me being an arrogant twat about it, but that no. is the reason. It's because we had a series that banged and, you know, that exploring series, but it's where the way he started acting like he was the bollocks and, you know, all these chains and smoking weed or all that, you know. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, I don't really want to hang, hang around this guy anymore. Yeah. Like that's, And I don't want to go in, up to him and say, mate, you need to change. You need to be this. If that's who he wants to be. Fair play, mate. Yeah. But I'm not going to come and give you an explanation. I'm just going to sort of do my own thing. Yeah. So I think he thought uh, uh, he had a level of, of confusion on like, okay, why have I sort of ditched him? Right. Did you just not speak to him as much? Or? Uh, yeah, I just sort of started, you know, hanging out with different friends sort of thing and yeah. doing my own thing. Because you, cause didn't you go to America and do a song with them or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did all of that. Like, we did a lot of stuff, mate. And those exploring videos, like, they were the sickest thing. Like, our dynamic on camera was amazing. Like, so good. Yeah. You know, we got on really well. And anyone that I tried to make, you know, I've tried to make exploring vid- videos with since then, I've, it's not, there's not been the same dynamic yeah. as me and him. And that's, that does, like, get to me. Like, I do sort of almost wish, like, Fuck, I wish we were just still mates and we still banged, you know, videos out. Whether they're exploring or not, we had a good sort of, like, chemistry on camera. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, so I obviously start distancing myself. And then um, uh, we were at a nightclub and he <laughs> he uh, had contacted the nightclub to be put, like, on, a, you know, the door as, like, special guest. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, my word. Yeah, so that's that's, was, that, that's an ego issue. That's and I remember seeing that and just being like, "Mate, what the fuck?" What you saw it on the? Do- I remember seeing that and I was like, "Is this is this a joke? It's gotta yeah. be real." So it was like, yeah, so it was like cameo featuring Ellie uh, Elliot Crawford, and I was like, "Okay, fair play to him." I think I might go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, was like, I think I might go. So basically, I went, uh, and obviously we get there and like all the attention. He's got a booth that's like elevated, and you know everyone's around him. We go in there and like it's sort of the crowd goes from there and they sort of come over here. Yeah, yeah. Now, bit of a dickhead move. Like I was going purely for that intention. Like I just was. Yeah. I wanted to be like, no, mate, like you need to remember your roots. Yeah. Yeah. Get get back down to real, like the real world sort of thing. Yeah. Anyways, like, uh, you know, at this point we haven't spoken in a while and all of that. And he, he like, he sort of was like, oh yeah, mate, come here. Yeah. Come join us. And I was like, no, no, mate. Like, I said, no. So I just, I just sort of didn't really pay attention. I went off and had my night out on the other end of the club. Anyways, he got livid at this. Started on my mate. Um, what, well, he's come over at the, that, that no, night? No, Lawrence, my friend, walked past their booth at one point. He started on him because he thinks my mate Lawrence is the reason why I've, like, distanced myself. But, um, yeah, uh, then anyways, we leave. And it was following that... I think he was obviously probably smashed or whatever. I don't know, but he calls up KSI and then does what he does. Fucking hell! Have you heard? The, did you hear the phone call? No. So he called. He called him up, and I, I mean, it's been many years since since I've heard it back. But he's basically like Joe's about to fight him, and he's like, "I hope you knock him out and stuff like that." And then I think he even says Joe's got too big for his boots because I remember watching it thinking, "You." <laughs> Joe did actually make you though. Like, it, I know that sounds like such an arrogant way to okay. look at it, but they're the facts. Mm. They are the facts. It's it's like if if like you started acting like that with me. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like yeah, I I, <laughs> I, I always find that quite strange. Whenever I even like hit another thousand followers on something, I'll tweet saying thanks to you. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, like oh, you haven't got to do it Jack, every follower. You get. <laughs> yeah. Every single follower, another follower. Thanks, Jack. Yeah. Uh, I remember once I I did a, I was doing I started to do this series called Clickbait, like way before I did the yeah. new one, and uh, I was trying to get these guests on, and I asked him, and it, he was like, "This was before you fell out," and uh, he come and picked me up in this new Mercedes and that, and it was like I got in the car and. Um, he was talking it, talking about it, and he's like blasted this like Drake tune, or whatever, and he had all these chains on, and I was just like, mate, like I said outside, I just drive a 2001 or like two Toyota Yaris. I was like, this isn't me at all, and I could tell that he thought he was like big time, like bigger than KSI almost. So that was fucking, it was weird, but. I did think going back to the call that it might be staged to try and sell the fight more, which I thought would have been a genius move. Yeah, I mean, on paper, it does sound genius, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. But- no, that's the thing. Like, and building up to that fight, like, I, if anything, I should have made more of a 
sort of, I guess, like marketing sort of strategy in terms of like, after this fight, I need to use what I've, you know, the the publicity and everything to propel my career. Mm. Whereas instead, all I did is think, I just, I'm only thinking about the fight. I didn't make any videos really on the build up to it. Mm. I didn't think about, yeah, any of that. I just wanted to beat KSI and that was it. And yeah. even if I did beat him, I'd then, I'd then be like, right, what now? Yeah. So yeah, I, I've, yeah. So, you, so just before we get onto the box then, you, yeah. know, you, would you, would you, how you, you mentioned your latest waffling, you'd have Elliot back on your, back on your podcast. Mm. Just to just to have a just to have a chat, just to have it out. Yeah, I mean, it would be interesting. I, it's weird. It's like it's one of them ones where <laughs> who contacts who first? Yeah, I think you've already put your olive olive I branch have, out but there. But as in, like, yeah, I I mean, yeah, I haven't heard anything back. No, what's he doing now? I'm not sure. No. I don't know. He he looks very different. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. He he he. he last thing I'll say about it, but I don't think he because he could have whether or not you were mates anymore. He could have mm. used that platform and and tried to at least run with it a little bit. I but think the abuse was too much. Th- yeah, because he he did snake you big time. Yeah. But he he did. I mean, he did a video where he was just eating an ice cream on a on a on a yeah. spinning roller coaster, and it was forty forty five second long video him just eating an ice cream on 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 a roller coaster, and at the end it was like sponsored by the ice cream it was just like you're just killing your what? anything <laughs> any kind of platform now yeah no it was i think yeah like that's what sort of showed it showed itself like when when we stopped making videos and he just made he just made videos yeah it, it was like didn't really come out of anything that was like mm. boom this is worthy of you being a big time youtuber sort of thing did it did it ever some of the content he was making on his channel because he was so closely connected to you yeah. did it ever embarrass you like like some of the stuff he was doing like not embarrass me. Nah, not embarrass me. Like, at the end of the day, he's his own person. He can do what he wants. Mm. But, yeah, all I know is probably the reason why he did eventually stop, I feel, is that, mate, everything he posts, like Instagram, YouTube, whatever, it was just snake emoji, snake emoji, oh. snake, snake, snake. Yeah. And I think that that must have just been toxic. Like, yeah. when you feel like literally the world it hates me. Like, yeah. not just doesn't like me, they fucking hate me. They think I'm a snake. Like, that must be horrible to live with. And that's where I'm like, I'm to a point now where I'm like, mate, I almost want to see, like, is he all right? Yeah. Is he all right? Like, after all this time, like, you don't hear anything of him now. Right. So it's like, yeah. That um, shows, you, shows you as a bigger man that you've moved on and you want to actually check in on him and yeah. stuff like that. So consider this the olive branch then. Yeah. Get, get him on happy hour. Get, oh, get him on waffling. You need him on waffling <laughs> yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. We'll it's, see. We'll see what happens. what we tend to do. We tend to let guests go on other podcasts and then we snake in and get them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think there we'll go for a break. When we come back, we'll be speaking to Joe about more about waffling. We'll talk about the yep. boxing. Yeah. Um, because you've probably never spoken about that before. Never, but <laughs> <laughs> and um, we've got some hypothetical questions and some Twitter questions. So come back after this. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome back to Jack Makes Happy Hour. Still here with Stevie, still here with Joe. Stevie. Yeah. You right? <laughs> <laughs> I like doing that, just putting you right under. It's weird, isn't it? Well, I never really know what I'm doing here, so no. those it's... moments. You have you seen much of Joe's content online? I saw all the melt stuff back in the day. Yeah, um, it was quite strange because, as we just said during the break, I know nothing about YouTube. YouTube's not really my kind of thing. Mm. But back, probably when YouTube first started coming out as quite a big thing, and KSI did all of his Welcome to Beast videos. Yeah, I'd see all of those, and then when your internet melt stuff came out, I'd always see those. Mm. But I fi- now I watch nothing. I find like, a lot of people. Sorry to cut you off there, but I f- I find a lot of people that don't even like youtube know who you are like you you kind of like that that series was so popular i felt like it broke out of like the yeah. youtube world but i think because that that <clears throat> those videos went viral on facebook as well so that yeah, was yeah, yeah. that was where people who don't go out of their way to go onto youtube you're still seeing it well Did- yeah i mean i think like at that moment it was like it almost bridged the gap from people that don't even watch youtube it gave them like it was because when i when i started watching youtubers it they were all gamers so it was almost like you had to be like a gaming sort of person to watch youtube that's what i felt and i remember putting that series out and people that were like you definitely aren't a gamer you definitely don't sit on the internet all day Mm. but you what this this connects to you i felt like that that's what that series sort of did it was sort of like funny for just sort of everyone Mm. rather than just like a specific audience yeah i think so yeah did did you did you make any money off the facebook ones because i saw a lot of people ripping your content yeah no never 
It's mad, isn't yeah. it? Like and na- I, nowadays. Yeah. And nowadays, like, obviously, yeah, there's a lot of money in Facebook. Like, mm. it's in, I know people that have made fucking millions. Yeah. So, yeah, and they people would just rip your videos and just be able to make money off it. Whereas now, I think Facebook have, like, cracked down on it and you're, you can only upload content that you either have permission to or that's your own. Mm. Do, you, do you have a Facebook page? Yeah, mate. And I, I have a company run it, like, just posting. They, they basically have permission from, like, loads of viral companies yeah. that like, like that have like viral videos and they just fucking churn content out it's like almost just like a passive income my facebook is just right basically run by another company like i'd recommend it if you want to yeah that's get what, into it <laughs> that, that's what i've started doing yeah, yeah you've started, started doing that as well yeah, yeah. Started doing it yeah so my mate tom runs my facebook page yeah and at the moment because it only recently got monetized mm. at the moment we're just uploading old jack mate clips yeah putting them on and like podcasts so like clip with gervais that we put on like banged and eddie hearn banged yeah so we're using all of that but we're now starting to license other youtubers that are like me so there's this guy called game face ed who's like this up and coming youtuber he's on like 30k but i love him i think he's well funny so we're licensing his content putting it on and stuff because i i know what you mean about just using it as a passive page but i don't know if that's what i want to do yeah. But I'm sure off camera, when you tell me how much money you make, I'll be straight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is, yeah. I mean, it, there's potential there, yeah. If it's, I almost just completely disconnect myself from Facebook because if I look at it, my I have that thing of like integrity, like what the fuck am I doing? That's an actual like yeah. joke. Why is Joe Weller's Facebook page posting about an Asian lady's fucking, <laughs> I don't know, eating frogs or something? Do you know what I mean? It's a load of bollocks. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I just I just go, you know what? That's another just passive. Yeah. avenue of income yeah and i think that's that's something that as i've gotten older as well that business element which i hate like i hate the business side of it i'm all about just the creative mm. but being a bit more business savvy has yeah just i guess become more a prominent thing in my mentality mm. having several avenues of income so that i can then do what i enjoy like waffling because mm. waffling makes no money and if i only did that well no money it makes some but not yeah. enough to like live you know for all of us and all of that so yeah that's why i'm yeah staying on it with these brands and doing these you know certain videos that i don't really want to do but Mm. it's sort of like you have to you have to do them ones that pay the bills as well yeah Yeah. you don't strike me that someone that's genuinely like motivated by money not at all and that's my problem as well because like i'll get a big deal through and sometimes i'll be like no Mm. because we're not i won't say no but i'll look to myself i'll be like Fuck, because I know on paper I need to I need to take this life changing amount of money, yeah, and that's this gonna like open up a lot of doors in terms of freedom. Mm. And that's yeah. Um, but my motivation since day one has always been I want to be gassed in what I'm making. Yeah, I want to know when I'm putting this out I'm gonna have that feeling of like this is sick. Yeah, and I've worked so hard. Yeah, that's what gets me going, not not money. Mm. But that's got me into bother before because you know after the. After my KSI fight, mm. and I was like, right, I need to take a breather. I need to sort of like get myself together and think about what I truly want to make. Like when that didn't, when what I want to make, I never really thought of anything. I was continuing to live, go to Bali and all this stuff. And my bank balance was just going down and down. Mate, I got to a point where I, I barely could afford to live my lifestyle. Really? In terms of my house, my car, etc. Yeah. Like it went all the way down. Wow. And I had to almost re- rebuild from scratch almost. What, because you just went uploading and stuff? Because I wasn't, I was like, look, I, I hate the idea of making, like, creativity for mo- like and money really don't... They clash. Yeah, massively. Mm. Mm. If you're doing it for money, mm. that creative freedom and enjoyment ain't really there. No. I, it's, it's weird because I, I, I relate so much because I've, I've got a brand deal sitting in my inbox right mm. now. And um, my last three videos have been demonetized, as I yeah. say. And uh, they want me and Fiona to play this anime sex game again. So I did it before, a couple of months ago. Yeah. And they're like, it's got to be a bespoke video. So you don't do anything bar play the game. So it's not even at the start. Check out Raid Rage Shadow Legends or check out this. It's you sit there with your fiance as a 27 year old man yeah. and play this anime sex game. And I can't bring myself to do it. Mm. I can't bring myself to do it. And luckily, I'm so grateful that I'm in a position right now where I can turn down that kind of money. Yeah. I'm not saying that in a big headed way at all, but I'm thinking one day if this all goes to shit, and you must have that thought in the back of your mind all the time. Am I going to become irrelevant tomorrow? That's such a big word in the YouTube world, irrelevant. But that's weird. Already, I feel like I am irrelevant. Right. And that's that's weird. That's where I'm all, I'm already there. 
That's so now mad. that's why now I only focus on like what I enjoy doing, <coughs> i.e. the waffling. I was going to say, do you think I, that... And I only do branded videos on my main channel. Do you think being irrelevant could actually be quite a nice place to be? It's weird, mate. It's weird because when you've been on top of the game, like when you've been... And I felt like I'm on top mm. when I was prime internet melts. Mm. And then when you're not there, that's fucking shit. Like it just is because you're like, not, oh, the popularity, but where you've been, felt like you've been making the best stuff and using your potential to the maximum and then when you feel like i'm now no longer i don't feel like i'm using my creative potential that that just feel yeah it feels and obviously what comes with that is irrelevancy because you're not making you're not making videos yeah that that feeling shit and that's the thing that sort of like hangs over me more than anything uh do what what defines relevancy to you though is it the views is it being in a youtuber clique Nah, like, as in, so, like, when basically, the t- the times I've been, like, my most relevant is when the Exploring series have been banging, obviously my fight, but, like, the Exploring series banging, Internet Melts banging. Both making, you know, in their prime, making videos that I enjoy, that people enjoy. That's what I'd say, for me, is relevant. Right. Obviously, yeah, I guess everyone's interpretation is a little different, but... What do you think the general kind of, like, YouTuber... I hate using this wanky term, but like the community, mm. the UK YouTubers, what do you think their opinion of you is? Like, do you think they still see you as relevant? Because I 100% still see you as one of the top YouTubers in the UK. I'm buzzing to get you on both to chat to you mm. and both because you're going to bang numbers. There's no denying that. Mm. That's how I feel you you are. But you 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 doubt yourself, don't you? Like you've just, you, you just sat there and said you you almost feel like you... You're irrelevant. You're our most requested guest ever. Yeah. So, so what? Do, what is? What's your opinion of? What do you think is your? What's your place in the YouTube community? Or have you not got one? Ah, uh, mate, it's weird. I don't. I don't even know. Like, I obviously, I like to think. Obviously, people think I'm quite like authentic and real. Like, yeah. as in, I'm not a wanker. Yeah. I, mean, I am a wanker, but I'm not at the same time. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean. yeah. But yeah, in terms of like, in terms of knowing like. Where I am, yeah, I, I think that's right. So I don't truly really know who I am. Right. Whereas I used to be so sure. Yeah. Whereas, it, I mean, I know who I am off camera, as in when it's just me and my mates and I'm with people and I'm like, I'm very sure of myself there. Mm. But in terms of creatively on YouTube, I ain't got a fucking clue. Right, I get I what you mean. Like, what videos does Joe Weller make in 2020? Like, what is his style of videos? Fuck knows. I think you hit a level of success, though, where it's not so much about the content. So you could post anything and I'll just want to see what you're making because I'm subscribed Why to Joe. Why do you reckon w- that is though? I don't know, but I, I will agree with you. I don't know what kind of content you make now. No. If I had to explain to someone what you do, yeah. there's not a niche I could put you in. <laughs> no, in it, in no, it. But I, but I subscribe for for you. Do you reckon it's because you've? You, I'm quite open about my ups and downs? Yeah. Do you almost feel a bit connected to me? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Because that's what I feel maybe... maybe yeah, there's an there's an element of that of the and maybe it is that that connects me to my viewers rather than just like a piece of content. It's yeah. more me as a person. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I always try and figure out like what 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 am I if I was to say like break down what am I on YouTube? What do I want to make? I wouldn't know what I write down and that's where I look at like someone like Logan Paul who's yeah. got a team around him that are like curating this brand it's almost like if i like i've got the potential like logan paul has mm. that's how in my mind i'm like in terms of like you know ability mm. i have that it's just that i feel like say someone like him has got a team. ideal team that can bring it to life and sort of help him there whereas i feel a little bit alone sometimes yeah you're it's weird you you're so bang on because me and me and alfie have, have, have spoken about you in length before and and, and we agree like i i think this year on, I, I did that wanky thing where I was like, 2020, I'm going to actually make a go of this. Yeah. And, I, and I, I, I've, I've stayed true to my word. But the one thing that I've done differently is I've built a team. So I've got, I, I had, I know I had you and, and another podcast co-host, but mm. away from that, I've like, Fiona's now left her job in retail to work for me. Alfie's left his job um, in, a, in a care home to work for me. And Alfie's a very like-minded person yeah. uh, to me. So I feel like now I'm actually building like this team I'm be, I'm able to now create better stuff than I've ever created before and mentally I feel in a much better place with it because w- what you said at the start of the show when you said you couldn't ever make a video if someone was in the room you'd like cringe or yeah. I was exactly the same but now because Alfie's ideas are exactly the same as mine 
I can sit and do a jackmate video yeah. with him in the room because he'll go, you didn't deliver that right or mm. you need to do this, you need to do that. So I think that that would probably be your best guess is to build a team around you. And now you've got Theo back and not that he ever went away, but you're now you're doing something more official with Theo all the time and you've got Luke. You're already starting to build that foundation yeah, of people yeah, yeah. that care about you. Yeah, for sure. I, the thing is, I've always, I've had Luke and Theo around me for a long, a long time and they've seen me. I mean, even when we film as a group, they've seen how I... I still I do struggle. It's it's almost like uh, even though I've, even though I've got the team around me and those guys do support me and everyone supports me, I think the thing that's gone a little bit is almost like the passion for the YouTube as an entity, mm. like a place for my creativity. Yeah, it's almost like you I break out of it. It's almost like oh, it's weird, mate. I, all I know is it, it is a bit of a mess in my head. Yeah, in my head. <laughs> yeah. It, it just is. Yeah, like I like doing. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've said like I like the waffling because it's just chatting like this, but it's not truly creative. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's just me talking. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, well, um, maybe, maybe open up and get guests on and stuff like that. Because yeah. I feel like sometimes when we have well strange guests, like we've had Peter Blexley, who was an undercover cop for like 24 years and mm. stuff like that. And when we have people like that on, I find that I'm actually developing a skill in trying to learn how to interview somebody. Yeah. So uh, every, every one of these is a learning curve because we mm. might have Joe Weller on, then we might have peter blexley then we might have gervais on and it's yeah. all different so i think yeah. it really does sound wanky but me watching you as you've done waffling i already think you're a different person to when you first started in in the terms of like how you open up and how you talk about your mental health and stuff so yeah. i think it's good for you i think you should keep doing it but yeah then what real. the fuck do i know nah, yeah, I'll, de I'll definitely <laughs> keep on with waffling yeah. without a doubt but it's almost like that is that does seem like it's my side hustle right for sure, yeah, yeah it doesn't feel like that's my main thing yeah yeah, have so, another fight. I oh mean, that's what everyone keeps saying, isn't it? Would well, you? not everyone, but it's in like people that I speak to. They're like, "Mate, just do it, just do it." But for me, in terms of like the whole fighting thing, what would you have another one? I don't know, mate. I, I really don't know because, like, on one hand, I'm like, I have no interest in going through all that shit again. Right. Who is like, there left? Well, what? it would be like obviously the one, the one that's there is Deji. Like that, that would be the thing. But it's like one minute I'm just like. I, I'm like, I do not want to fight. There is nothing about me that wants to smack anyone in the head. And on top of that, the mental, like the toxic nature of it, if you're not truly like a fighter by nature, yeah. mate, it fucks you. Like what it did to my confidence, going through all of that, putting my heart and soul into it, and then me bottling it. Mm. That fuck, mate, I, I was traumatized from it, like fucking straight up. And, really? Yeah, like big time. Like that, that big reason why I think I lost my confidence on camera. Wow. Well, my main, main channel was, that makes was sense. due to that. That does make sense. And I, mate, I, part of me still thinks if to this day, is there a little bit of that still there? Like where it's like, I'm not fully able to be myself. Do you think if you won, you'd be in a different position? Probably. Wow. Mm. And that's where like, that's where I'm like, I, I do sometimes think I'm like, oh, mate, part of me wishes I didn't fucking do it. But then part of me is like, I've grown so much from that. Yeah. I fucking showed that like, yeah, you know, I've, changed the game i invented fucking YouTube well you boxing, did yeah, do you know yeah. What i mean so like you know there's the two ways to look at it but yeah well let's 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 talk about it because there's a lot to talk about obviously most people will know the story now um ksi at the moment is probably like the top youtube boxer in the yeah. scene um recently beat logan paul last november um before that um beat you yeah, didn't he? It was like one of the first, one of the first fights. Well, if not, it was the second. Yeah, Bar so me and Theo. Yeah, so go on. How did it, the first fight you and Theo? How'd that come about? So that was just me going. Look, ba I think like subconsciously inspired by Conor McGregor versus Mayweather. Yeah, I was like, well, they're crossing over and doing it, so let's do it for a video. Mm -hmm. uh, go to the gym, do it. I win, um, and then. KSI obviously commented on my Instagram of, you know, us mm -hmm. posing, saying, let me fight the winner. So I was just like, right, well, we're doing this. I was like, this could be a way for me. Because at this point was when I was feeling like, I don't really want to do YouTube videos anymore. Yeah. So I was like, this is something that I could now go into. I love training, like athlete, all of that. Mm. Let's do it properly. Let's do it in an arena and smash it. Um, and at first he didn't want to do it. Like he, he was just like, oh, I'll do it, but I'll do it against Harry. Cause I wasn't really that relevant at that point. Right. He was like, yeah, I'll do it against Harry. who was popping. Yeah. And I was like, nah, and nah. obviously I made the videos being like, pussy fucking wank it. Like all that <laughs> classic. Um, and yeah, eventually obviously, yeah, we do the press conference. Did you see that at upload? Yeah. 
That was chaos. Yeah. Like, that was that was sick. At, at that point, mm. going into that press conference, had it already turned into some genuine beef with you and JJ? I don't know. Because, like, obviously, on the, ca- the, the stuff on camera, on YouTube, it's a very just, like, ego, all of that, trying to outdo each other and all that bollocks. Mm. But face-to-face... It was it was still a little bit like smiley. I think the point when when it went sour was at the press conference. I feel like I was winning the crowd. I mean, in our podcast, you know, the, me and JJ, we spoke, and he said I could feel that you were winning the crowd, right? And that got to him. Yeah. So then, obviously, he comes out with his mental health statements. Yeah. To which I'm like, fucking, you're not saying that shit, mate. Like yeah. a lot of this this crowd, like, have gone through a lot of things. So, yeah, that's when that. And, you, and you, you, were, you were going through a lot of things, weren't you? Oh, yeah, mate. So it was like, I, I that was the moment when, as a, just a watcher, yeah. I was like, fuck, this has gone too far. Mm. And I remember I made a video about it, and I was cussing him up for you it. You were saying it was fake, mate. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And I was literally like, Jack, mate, fucking twat, what are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> I literally were thinking, I was like, you, I, that's, it was at that point that I was thinking, you're sour. Yeah, you want to you want to do something sick on YouTube and you're bitter. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. And yeah. I was like, why? He filmed the video for your roast at that moment. He had that saved <laughs> yeah, ready to yeah. send oh, to yeah. you. We'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, we'll, talk we'll about get onto that. that. We'll yeah. get onto that. Um, no, I, I came out and I tweeted about uh, a year after that my opinion on the whole thing changed completely yeah. Yeah. because I think at first it was it was not so much there was probably a bit of that I'll admit but I think what it was is me having to play up to what well, I used to always sell mm. myself as the anti youtuber yeah, yeah, yeah. so I did think it was fake yeah. 100% I yeah. did but I knew if I sat there because I'm a boxing fan anyway mm. so I knew if I sat there and was like this is brilliant people be like oh jack like you're yeah, there yeah. I'm what Kavos is now like and Kavos is like I'm not a fan of Cavos, obviously, but I thought I had to play up to it. But yeah. yeah, you grow and you learn, and I'd love to be involved in something like that. So maybe you, there was a you bit. You were of that. training, weren't like, or you started training as a result of the boxing, YouTube boxing. Yeah, I don't know if it, uh, if it was bollocks, but I basically had a call from some guy who works in within that, and he was like, "Look, th- this fight's coming up. You can get on the undercard if you. This was for JJ's next one. Okay, if you have a." If, if you have a story if you have a bit of a feud so me and Josh Peters were both called up by this guy and we was both told to start beefing really so we started doing it really yeah but then and that adds fuel to the whole thing of you thinking it's fake because so someone's actually so telling you basically you to. yeah th- I, I went against everything <sighs> yeah went against everything yeah shit well yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean looking at the Logan Paul KSI the second fight obviously mm. you know Logan was giving it the big in and and he sort of like won the press conferences and like won the build up in my opinion. The American ones. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he yeah, I feel like he outdid all you know, did uh, all of that better than JJ, but mm. I feel like he was just trying that's the part he wanted to win. Yeah. I he wanted to be the better entertainer. Yeah, and he was. He he nailed it. And then you got to the fight, and I think that's when he was on an adrenaline dump. Yeah. Because he'd done all that all week. He because w- in the first KSI Logan fight. He got dominated. Yeah. Sat there, tail between his legs, pussy. Yeah. And then he wanted to, I think that's the part, because he wants to be the biggest entertainer in the world. Mm. That's the bit that he wanted to smash, and he did. Second time round, he did. Yeah, yeah. second to, second time round. And that's mm. why like, after losing the fight, he, he literally didn't give a toss, it seemed. Yeah. Whereas if anything is... M- yeah, for me, it fucking fucked me. Not because I lost, but because I bottled it. Right. And that's the bit that fucked me, because like, whether it be my driving test, my like playing football, playing cricket... I always bottled it growing up. Did you? Yeah, I played for Brighton. I wanted to be a professional footballer. I was on track. But because every every match, I'd get the ball and just think, oh, shit, shit, oh, shit. My nerves, my anxiety would just rule me. I'd bottle it and fuck up every time. Wow. And then to see, to see that happen, then when that was meant to be the moment that I conquer it, Oh mate, that I think that's what destroyed me. And that set set you off on a different tangent yeah. to what what it could have been. Yeah. So you, you do you often think about what could have been the other route, the other road? It's not even like what could have been. I mean, what could have been in the in the sense of like, oh, maybe I would have been a bit more like at peace with myself. Mm. But more of yeah, I definitely still think back to that night quite a lot. Why do you think you bottled it? Like what? No, I'm not saying. I'm I don't, just... I've, obviously, it being the biggest <clears throat> moment, but like. Didn't, didn't sleep the night before, didn't eat the whole day, threw up just before I went out. What, you were, were you nervous? Well, yeah, it's like consciously I was like, I was able to have a conversation, I was fine, but subconsciously my heart was absolutely doing bits. I was like adrenaline, like, but it naturally, and I think if you ask JJ, he'll say the same in a way because it is fucking huge. Yeah. Um, 
but he was just able to fully stay composed, whereas my brain fried the second. Like, it's weird because <laughs> up until the point at which we, you know, you know, when the ref brings you together and says, mm. like, right, well, I want a clean fight. I was saying to him, like, you're nervous, mate. Like, I'm fucking, I'm going to do this. You're nervous as hell. And I thought he was, I thought he looked nervous. Yeah. And the second that bell went, mate, I literally, I lost all ability to control myself. I don't, I hardly remember it. Not because I was getting sparked, but literally because that moment, I literally, yeah. Whereas he was able to stay composed and that's where I'm like, fucking fair play because I know how, how, well, how it was in there. Wow. Your first boxing match and you're in front of that crowd, Fuck. all everything on the line. Yeah, it's mad. Oh, that's mad because I've had times before, well, nothing on that scale at mm. all, but like where I've had to go up on stage and do something yeah. and I'm shitting myself. Mm. And then when it comes to the moment, I've just about scraped through. Yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine feeling like that 50-50 when somebody else is trying to punch you in the head. <laughs> like, no, no, yeah, no, it is a the... weird thing. And I remember when, it, when the ref jumped in, I was like, thanks, mate. I was really? Like, I was like, thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. Cheers. I was like, thank get me out of this fucking misery. Before the fight, did you... Did you have any... Could you imagine that you'd lose or was you certain you were going to oh. win? It's weird because like, I remember the press conference the day before, the weigh-in. Yeah, the weigh-in like, the day before, like, the whole crowd was just Team KSI like booing the shit out of me. Mm. Horrible. That was, was it? fucking horrible. I was there. Mate, think about it. you got to get into your boxes and stand in front of them. And, oh, mate, it was literally like... That was horrible because they were booing the shit out of me. I was... I mean, I was low-key shaking. Wow. And... Uh, he was so confident and you could feel it. Mm. And even though like in the in training, mate, I was doing well, like I was doing all right, like I wasn't amazing, but like I had I had the the ability to beat KSI comfortably. Yeah, my money was on you. Like, <laughs> mate, same. Yeah. My <laughs> trainer put every penny I paid him on me winning. Every penny. Stuff like that doesn't help, does it? No, but well, I didn't know. I didn't. He didn't tell me. I, only afterwards I found out about yeah. it. Yeah. But it's the fact, like, mate, like, every, you know, everyone around me was fucking confident as hell. Mm. Like, I was like, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. Ooh, obviously, I fuck not overlooking him, but because I was, I'd put in the work. Yeah. Absolutely, but yeah. Um. Overall, I just wasn't. It was that the moment. Yeah. That I wasn't trained Overcome for. By I was the trained moment. to box. Yeah. But I wasn't trained for the occasion. Mm. And that is so key. Like all the professionals I've spoken to now. They say the same thing. It's like, yeah, it's that that performing in front of the crowd. And JJ himself was like, mate, I'd done a tour before. Like, you know, during my training, I was on stage. I was getting used to that. So that didn't phase me. Yeah. Whereas, you know, yeah, that would be the thing that I guess now I'd work on. But even now, like the, how far I've come since then, mm. like if I did do another boxing match, maybe I'd be, you know, I'd be able to handle it. I reckon you should. And maybe imagine that feeling of me winning. Yeah. And then it'd be like the underdog story. You've you've come from the ashes and you've risen. Do you think that would give you confidence again? Like yeah, there'd be an internet melts back. eleven or twelve <laughs> or whatever on there. Straight back <laughs> yeah. to Straight it. Back onto the internet melts. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I I don't know. It's weird because like I also also told myself. Well, I remember feeling like whether I win, even if I win today, it's not gonna affect me like it's i'm still gonna be at this point of like what now because the ultimate thing even before the boxing was that i don't really want to do videos anymore mm. yeah so i knew i didn't i didn't want to do another boxing match so i was i was still gonna always be at that point where it's like i've just had this huge high and now yeah and I, who knows i may have been at that thing again where i'm constantly looking back like oh i won that boxing match and now i've done nothing with it and now i'm mm. do you know what i mean so it may have just ended up being at the same sort of point what what did you do the night you lost. So talk Out of dominoes. Right, okay. <laughs> right. So you so you leave the ring. Leave the ring. You go straight to the dressing room. <sighs> cry my fucking eyes out. Yeah. Oh, Did you God. see JJ backstage? No. You didn't see him? No. When was the next time you saw him? Charity charity ma no, no, that was before. Uh a while. In real life, is it Logan Paul one? Oh wow. In real life. Wow. So, 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 from the moment that fight was ended, you didn't see him again until months and months. And yeah. Wow. Right. So, so you didn't see him in what hotel? So yeah. So I yeah get back to the hotel, and it's just sort of like thank fuck that's all over. Let's go get yeah like add food with the family, and just sort of like made a laugh of it. Yeah. Just made so, a laugh of it. Mate. Were you? What were you thinking up here though? Like regardless of how you were acting, were you thinking were you thinking of the repercussions? Were you thinking you were gonna be a meme? Were you were you getting many texts from people? Like I uh, mate, to be honest, 
the support was the mad thing. Like everyone, I'd literally, yeah, the amount of people that were for Weller mm. seemed to absolutely go through the roof. Almost mm. like it felt like more than JJ, right? And I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know whether it's like because I came out on the mic. Uh, when they were obviously, you know, they interview the fighters afterwards. I came mm. out on the mic in the ring, mm. and I was literally. I didn't pre-plan anything. Obviously, I don't, you don't, you don't, you don't pl- plan to lose. Yeah. But I was, uh, yeah. I think maybe how I conducted myself there, I was like fair play. You know, bearing in mind people probably thought I was going to be like a sore loser or something. But I think that won over a lot of people, and I had so many messages about that that specific moment. Mm. And yeah, there was a lot of support, a lot of fan accounts made, and all of that. And overall, I was in a pole position I think I, I, I then recorded a, a little video a little 30 second video that I put on my channel just saying fair play JJ like you won enjoy it etc 7 million views wow. people supported me it was almost like fuck I've somehow come out you know yeah. on, on top here yeah. through losing Yeah. Um, and that's what you feel that's the wave you felt you should have taken like you should have ridden that wave a bit more after because you said you kind of had that hiatus didn't yeah you? it was weird because yeah I, I remember feeling like i was at a point where i did <laughs> i didn't necessarily want to you know the whole public eye thing being famous all of that really wasn't asked mm. so that's why I, I think in the moment i didn't capitalize on it i think if anything i wanted to get away from it which is why i went to bali and just went traveling and tried to like just yeah, yeah all of that how long did you go traveling for did you go uh, for a while overall I mean, Bali was a, as it was a month, but I think I did like a few different locations, like Egypt. Wow, what? And you're not uploading during this time? I think I I did an Egypt video about aliens and the pyramids, which got demonetized. Right. I reckon there's a little conspiracy <laughs> in that. <laughs> Second, aliens are in a title. Yeah, yeah. Same I reckon. My podcast about aliens. Yeah. Mm. It's weird though, isn't it? Why the fuck do YouTube care about because that? Because they can't let the secret out, mate. <laughs> oh right, aliens are real. Susan Wozniacki or whatever her yeah, name is. She that. is an alien. Oh, Susan. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we move on from the boxing, because um, obviously you were friends with JJ before it all happened yeah. and stuff, and I think you're on okay terms. No, now. mate, we're good now. Like, yeah. Honestly, after that, that podcast that we did yeah. was so needed. Yeah, it was lovely like, to see as mate, well. Yeah, talking through everything, like he's calm, I'm calm. We've you can see we've both matured for sure, and that was the nice thing about it. And. uh yeah, that that was sick for me. Like that, I re- I needed that. I think like deep down, I needed that. And yeah, yeah. So bit I'm of closure. Went well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we had JJ on here, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, about a year ago, mm. and he told us a story about you in the car park. Yeah, and I just need to get your opinion just for the happy hour <laughs> listeners. Well, I was livid. <laughs> was you? Livid. Was you? <laughs> <That's> basically, <man. laughs> right. So he said that you had a you, you, you had a underground car park fight off camera. Yeah. How was that? It wasn't really a fight. Basically, we were driving home from Westfield right. in Stratford. Uh, I was in my Mini Cooper. <laughs> 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 and basically, he was in his Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at a red light. Okay, I'm in front. And he thinks it's funny to go up to my car and just slowly try and push it with his car. <laughs> like, actually push it. I've got the hair break on. <laughs> Okay. Oh god. So he's actively like driving his Porsche into my Mini Cooper. He doesn't give a fuck. I mean why why is he not caring? It's probably doing more damage to his car, but obviously I'm fucking livid. I'm like, you think you can sort of just take the piss or whatever? I don't know. I was I was confused like why are you doing this? Yeah. The the the, the fight isn't on the cards at this point, is no, it? No, no, no. Right. But I think this is the thing. There's always been that little sort of like alpha battle. Yeah. Between whenever me and JJ have filmed or whatever, there's that, you know, yeah, so that, I think that's always there. It was banter. Yeah. It wasn't banter. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, he does it again at the next red light. And then we get to the car park. And I can't remember who I was in my car with, but I was like, the second we get back, I'm going for him. Classic, <laughs> classic. Year eight Weller was coming back, mate. <laughs> so I thought I was like, I'm going to do it. So, <laughs> so we get out and I literally just go up to him. I just floor him. I, that's all it is. I literally just grab him. And just shove him to the floor. Did I do any strikes? I don't think I did it. I don't... <laughs> it's like you're having flashbacks to now. <laughs> I don't know if I did any strikes, but I, I know I just put him to the ground and that was it. And that's all that was. Yeah. He, right. he did say a... you won. So yeah. Did he? Yeah, he said, yeah, you went, who won that one? He went, Joe did. <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't really a fight. More of just like, fucking don't. Yeah. Argue, I thought yeah. he said something about some girls. Oh mate, but that no, but that's something that totally got blown out of proportion based on how he worded it in a diss track, I believe. Right. But like, the word on the street is that he got with a girl that I fancied, mm. and really it was just 
the girl that was in Cristiano Ronaldo picking up girls, that video I did. Oh, right. It was one of the girls that obviously I kissed in yeah. that video that's from my local area. Um, and I think they had a entanglement. <laughs> 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 so yeah, they had that. Um and but oh yeah, no, that was it. It was at a gaming event. We were all staying over in ho- in the same hotel. And in the morning when he came into my room after doing the deed <laughs> Wait, oh, it was a threesome, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah, it yeah that is what he said. So basically, yeah, okay, it's with this other girl that's from my place. They're going to hate it. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I am. But um, they, yeah. So th- when JJ comes in, I say to like Cal Freezy and that lot, like, I'm like, oh, when he comes in, I'm going to like pretend to like be angry. I'm, like, I'm going to start on him. Um, and literally for like what? Last about two seconds, I got up and was like, you fucking, what do you think you're doing? And then I was like, no, I'm joking. That's all that was. Oh. <laughs> it was legit, but I was, I was like, I'm joking, mate. I don't so give a how shit. How did that shit even get out? Did he but, think but, he was? But then, but then it, it's where when he started doing a diss track on me for our boxing, he was like, "Yeah, I slept with your main chick." I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you didn't. Some girl um, from the Ronaldo video. Yeah. So, but you know, that's all that really was. Fair enough. What's your opinion on like the side men and that? Now, are you cool with them all? Because I've always been cool with him. I noticed there was that clip going around that bit of beef with you and Bazinga at the. At the oh f- yeah. No, that was a bit like. <laughs> Cool, mate. Like, I went up to him and was like, obviously, you know, little interview. Um, and he d- deferred. He was like, no, not now, mate. Trying to go home, to be honest. Trying to go home. He's not interested. All right, all right. This way, mate. This way. Bazinga hates it. I go around the corner. He's doing an interview for someone else. Yeah. And I just obviously think, like, well, that's fucking tosser. You know what I mean? Have you seen that clip? It's so funny because Ethan's doing this interview for this boxing channel and Joe comes striding around the corner and goes, oh, you didn't want to, while he's doing the interview, you didn't want to give me an interview but you'll do one with bloody Boxing Daily or whatever and whatever it was. He doesn't do Weller interviews but he does bloody Boxing Social interviews. It's all right, Ethan. Priorities, mate. And then as he walks off, he goes, tosser. He wouldn't give me one. He wouldn't give me an interview but he gives you one. <laughs> but on the on the actual stream, you can just see Joe in the corner just do that. It actually came up on the stream. It was so funny. It was so funny because yeah. I think that was the first time I'd met you like in person. Yeah, no, it was. Fight. It was, and I was just smashed. I was yeah, just you were waking. <laughs> And I was all sweaty in that yeah. shirt. And I put up the... Do you see it? I put up the picture the next day because I had a t- loose tie on. I said it looked like I was just got out of court after trying to get yeah. um, possession of Alex, who was my kid. I don't know if you saw it. Went, no. a, went a bit... <laughs> <laughs> but basically, well to round it off, yeah, people thought that me and Ethan had beef, whereas uh, we didn't have beef. I think he did actually comment on that video, though, and then deleted it. Oh, right. He I had think, beef. Because I think yeah. people were commenting saying, oh, Ethan's a wanker. Ethan's this, which I, I was like, oh shit, mm. you, know, you know, I don't want to, yeah, like send people on him. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think that yeah, that may have caused a little bit of upset. I don't know, but mm. overall with the side men, I'm absolutely fine with them, mm. and I believe that they are absolutely fine with me. Yeah, like, apart you know. from Vicstar, because obviously when he was on, he was saying that shit about. Yeah. Yeah. What? That was awkward. <laughs> he was just saying that he could knock you out one punch and stuff. Really? <laughs> Should I tell you a story about Vic Star? Oh, God. Oh, God. Fuck it. No, mate. He got mugged and I fucking was trying to back him. Wow. So basically, we were on holiday in Napa. Yeah. With the boys. <laughs> Classic. Oh, no. That, that was awful because JJ paid for that. Fucking hell. Like, he took us all on holiday and then there I am, a, like a year later, started on him. Wow. Yeah. But... And that was where it, that, I remember thinking, oh, shit. Yeah, that's a bit dodgy. But anyway, so we were on this holiday. Uh, and Vic has got his like iPhone 57 out. Like, at the t- <laughs> all I knew is at the time that's the latest model. Yeah. Anyways, so he's got a you know he's cutting about. I'm with him, he, you know, because he loves house music. I was like, he is a session, but I, I never would have thought it. Yeah. I never would have thought yeah. it. But um, he has his phone out, and these two guys come over and they're like, "Oh mate, what's the time?" <laughs> oh god, well, that one, mate. Obviously, at that point, I didn't even think about it because I was pretty fucked. Yeah, right? yeah. And um, anyways, yeah, what's the time, mate? Next thing you know, fucking. And then this guy's darting. He's he's gone. He's off. 
And Vic, oh, bless him. He's like, no, come back. <laughs> and then and I'm just like, fuck this shit. And I'm like, I, I try and run. Both of us try and run. The guy gets away and he's just stolen Vic's phone. But on that holiday, I really realized he's a solid bloke. Yeah. Vic Star. So, um, yeah, yeah, I felt really bad for him. It's, it's funny. Obviously, he didn't say. Yeah, I was going to say, out. I yeah. assume you know he said nothing about you. Yeah, knocking you out. Jack's oh, yeah. yeah. just yeah. being a prick. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, uh, when, when, we, um, when we met Vic Star, it was funny because. He's a bit of a, like, oh, I'm surprised at how much of a, like, bit of a geezer he is. Like, because yeah. when, you, when you see when you see him <laughs> online, he's playing, like, Minecraft or getting, like, a 75 kill streak on COD. Yep. Alfie was like, oh, I bet Vic is absolutely lovely. I bet he's so sweet. And I was like, yeah, I think he's he's nice. But we bumped into him at the fight. And Alfie was a shock because we went up to him. We was like, you're right, mate. And he's, like, tilt his head back. And he's like. Yeah, what are you saying? You're right. It's just like this is Vic Star. Like he's acting like a doorman or something. Yeah. It's it's mad. Interesting. I mean, yeah. No, nah, I mean, I'd love to know. Like, what does he? Like, does he have a missus? Is he a player? Like, what YouTubers do you know get about? Which ones are yeah. girlfriends? I that's, mean, what, that's what I found interesting. What since doing this podcast because we've had loads of guests on. Yeah, and it's like it's really interesting seeing what they're like in person because mm. some of them are exactly like how they come across, and then some are completely, completely. You different. get a surprise from quite a few of them. Yeah, like, well, like who? I I thought Bazinga was completely different than I expected. What did you expect After, him to be? Like? I expect him to be a bit chavvy and a bit chavvy. not my kind of person at all. Because I watched a couple of his videos before he came in, and I just didn't. I think I he, didn't like it at all. I and he was just lovely. I I really like him. I think he's sound. He's my. I think out of the side men, the ones I've met, I think he he's my favorite. And I see what he means though. Online, he I think Ethan does put on a bit of a like a. I, I watched one of his videos. He's just jumping <laughs> in front of the camera. Gun fingers and stuff. And it's like, You're quite cool. I, I'm not really a gun finger kind of guy. I don't think he is. No, but he's like, he's like, yo, yo got that. Like a rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that is how yeah, he acts, yeah. in, at least in the video I watched. And well, then he came here and he was just, yeah, completely normal and mm, nice. Mm, yeah. But most people are when they come here. I haven't thought of anyone that's been a bit like, what the fuck is that? I, I would love, I always say, <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> and, and, <laughs> until today. <laughs> I, w I would love to do a better podcast with Simon because I always say that he wasn't the worst guest. But he sat on the fence like yeah. constantly. Yeah. So he had just done a video like slagging off commentary channels and he'd got a lot of backlash from that. So I was like, come on the podcast, we'll talk about it. And I asked him and he was just like, they're all right. And it was just like very middle of the road. So I would love to get get him An on. An honest and, interview. Yeah, get him on and, and be open. But. So wait, but on that point of obviously commentary channels, mm. well, I'm turning into my podcast now, asking you the question. Yeah, do it. But... Mm. Obviously, you did your roast yeah. video. Yeah. Now, what like went through your head when you first watched my clip? Right. So I had got Alfie and Fiona to watch all of them before yeah. I watched them. Usually, like I'd probably say that oh, I'm not watching them, and then I watch them. But yeah. I 100 percent didn't. Mm. And I went, "Are there any that's really bad?" And they point, they picked two out. So they went, "Josh Peters one." Because like we copied his video and he's mugging me off for it. And when we when I uploaded that video, I was like, "So, Alfie, is this a bit too similar to Josh's?" He's like, no, "That's fine." So I was like, "Okay." So when he mentioned it, I was like, "Oh, that's a dagger in the heart." Yeah. But then they went and Joe Weller's one, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like, what has he said? Because I knew all the other people in that. I think I probably knew better because mm. I'd only met you once. Yeah. So I was like, "What?" what you you've you're not going anything <laughs> off my content like you're going i knew it was going to be deep and then when i watched it like my reaction was real i was obviously i'm hyping it up a bit for mm. the for the video but yeah. i was just like fuck that come from the heart like mm. that came from deep down in your <laughs> esophagus after like, he finished filming it you'd sent me the clip of what he did <laughs> and just went i think well it actually hates me <laughs> I was just like, oh, yeah, that, there's nothing I could have said. I was just like, yeah, yeah, so, it looks like he does. Go on, then. How real was that? <laughs> no, I was just basically from the Jackmate that I watched back in the day. Yeah. That I remember, like, any point someone would fuck up yeah. and you would get, jump on it. Now, mm. obviously, you've said mm. that a lot of that may have been to do with playing up to the Jackmate character, yeah. etc. cetera. Um, but I, yeah, I've just, I remember I've had a thought before of, like, people that, aren't happy with themselves often project that onto others like yeah. you know attack others you know and all of that mm. so that's why i thought okay how can i roast this guy and like actually make it a solid roast yeah i'm gonna go just down that avenue yeah no it's good to see yeah but like you know do you think uh you know what i was saying made any sort of sense y yeah oh, 100%. in terms of in the past 
even now, I don't know, it does any of it like yeah. hit reality? Yeah, 100% that used to be me. Yeah. But now I'm so much more comfortable with who I am. Yeah. Like, the, like I said, like the only jokes about other YouTubers I make now are just memes of myself. Mm. So that calendar, I will say now, I don't give a shit. It's a funny meme now. Mm. Ollie White merch, I don't care. It was uh, I was three years younger than I am now. Like Now I, I'm happy on YouTube. I've got a following. I like doing this. I don't really give a shit if other people fuck up. Mm. That's not to say that if somebody does something in the future that I really disagree with, I'm not going to articulate my opinion online and yeah. verbalize. I might do, but I think it's just a, now when somebody fucks up, I'm like, okay, do I care about this? Does it affect me? No, I'll yeah. just carry on. Yeah, because I remember back in the day, like there was a, something I did. I think I said in a video, oh, a fan, I was at like the Joe Sug Casper Lee like, film launch and a, f a fan... No, the security were like, oh, are you a fan or a YouTuber? And I was like, what? I'm not a fan, I'm a YouTuber or something like that. And I said that in a video. And you made a video about it or a part of a video saying, oh, Joe Weller thinks he's like, oh, it's awful to be a fan. He thinks he's above being a fan or something like that. And I remember watching, I was like, mate, like, really? Wow. Yeah, I remember. And that must I, remember, have, that I remember there were a, quite a few times where I, I remember thinking like, this kid is literally just, he must have been bullied at school yeah. or something or just a loser yeah and now he's taking it out on everyone else who has any sense of like popularity wow that's how it felt i think th that might have an element of truth in it because mm. when people say that it's like like oh, i've definitely been jealous of you in the past 100 percent, 100 percent. when people say you're jealous of alfie and ollie I never have i been jealous of that right because they've never made the content that i've wanted to make yeah. whereas i've probably seen you take a bit of inspiration from my content, yeah. make it internet melts, and then hit a level I've never hit before. So there was probably a part of me in my room going, oh, fuck this guy, thinks he's too big. Like I'd probably message you, you'd probably aired me, and then I've gone, oh, fuck this guy. We were in Project 6. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what was that? Yeah, so I think back then, there was, there's like I would have done stuff and not really thought about the repercussions. Yeah. Like You've remembered that. I don't remember that, but mm. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I quite believe it, yeah. right? But I wouldn't have thought of how long that will stay with you for. So yeah. when I knew that you didn't like me for a long time, I knew that. I think I'd heard bits here and there and stuff like that. It was like more that. of just like I thought your mentality was not not a positive one. For sure. I think that's what it was more than anything. I was like, this this guy's negative vibes. Yeah. I mean, that's what I think. Obviously, now I think completely different. Yeah. I think you're proper, like, decent, genuine, honest, positive guy. Yeah. And contribute positively to the platform right um but off camera as well because i also that's another thing when people are like, oh you're a great youtuber now nah, call me a good person yeah that's yeah be. yeah um and and, that, and that's people. why when when me, when me and alfie but first become friends and he was saying about how much he liked your videos yeah. i will say now like i put that tweet out about you the other day mm. like i'm i'm 27 now i don't care if people go oh you're kissing his ass any yeah. of that i'll give my honest i've get I've, I've had my years given the negative opinions yeah, 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 so yeah, now yeah. i'm gonna put the good opinions and i could always tell from the stuff you were saying that I relate to that. I was like, mm. I know we would get on. I yeah. know. Yeah, but yeah. like then I've forgotten about the time when I slagged you off in a video or I've done this or I've done that. Mm. So it's weird how them things come back around. Yeah. And that's why I just want to say now, Alfie days, let's hang out. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm sat in a... No chance. I feel like I'm yeah, sat yeah. in a therapy session. It's Mate, really that's strange. What, a, lot, a lot of this pod... Um, my podcast... Mm. I mean, obviously this isn't my podcast, but <laughs> whenever I'm involved in one, they often turn into therapy sessions yeah and it's weird how it does it's quite um, nice i mean yeah. it's, it's, it's just unusual it yeah. is therapeutic but um yeah i mean i love it i love talking like this yeah you know no I mean? it's like good we've got about 15 minutes left so really? i think yeah it's, go a bit longer we, we could probably can go a bit longer but we we'll have, have to change yesterday yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah, memory fuck it. we'll see how we'll see how we go but um first guest so that actually wants to do longer <laughs> in this hot room all right change so it quickly now. double check at least yeah all right we're going to swap the memory card out and we'll be back after this Hello and welcome back. Third part. We've done it in three segments because um, Joe's a good guest. Yeah. Do you have to get rid of a lot of stuff for waffling? Not really because we we keep everything in. Mm. Like, I mean, it is w as open as it can possibly be. Yeah. Like within reason. Mm. And that's the thing. Like we, I think that's how we wanted it to be. Like we don't, like the second we have to sort of uh, censor ourselves in any sort of way, that's when it became, well, started to feel like it was becoming... Um, 
sort of not as natural because we yeah. did a couple episodes where we were like, we want to get monetized, we want to get ads, let's do this a bit more PC. You know, we can't swear and shit and yeah, uh, fuck, fuck that. that shit. Yeah, <laughs> literally, like it's dead. So yeah. Before the break, we were talking briefly about Project Six. <laughs> Yeah, remember that week? In your how life? did that, mate? How did that come about? I think it was Nick Crompton. <clears throat> did he piece it all together? <laughs> nah, nah, he was the last piece. Really? So it was me and at the time a guy called Chip Daddy, Jamie Jamie Cottrell. Co- yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we were like, we want to do a collab channel because they seemed to be all the big thing back then. That was probably even before the Sidemen. Mm. And then we got some other YouTubers involved. Adam Waith. Mm-hmm. The channel where YouTubers go to die now, apparently, according to KSI. That's what he said at the press conference. Really? Yeah. With you, I think he said yeah. that, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, Jake Boys. Jake Boys. Lives in Elsham, out the road from me. I see him in Cameo all the time. In What, in a club? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Do you yeah. ever go up to him and speak about yeah, the good yeah, old we'll, days? we'll be like, you're right, <laughs> Project 6. You know <laughs> 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 And then um, we had two more spots, so I think we got you in for about a day. And then... Who recruited me? Who was like, yeah, let's get Weller? It was either me or Jamie, I think. But this is just before you blew up, mm. I think. I remember, Literally yeah. just before, though, wasn't yeah. it? It was, uh, it was like a week before the World Cup song came out or something like that. I remember, I remember joining and I was like, yeah, you know what? This could be a big thing. And to think that Nick, Crom- Nick Crompton technically took the format of Project 6... And made Team 10. Team 10, yeah, yeah. Because the thing was, Sorry. yeah, Nick Crompton was just literally, he'd be the first person to tell you this, he was literally a fanboy of me. Mm-hmm. And he used to comment all, all my videos. Yeah. And I watched one of his videos once. And I was like, oh, he's like a funny, chubby, little northern Peter Kay type yeah, character. Yeah. So I said to Jamie on on Skype, I was like, shall we get Nick Crompton to be the sixth member? And I called Nick up and was like, Simon Cowell at Judges Houses. I was like, yeah. you're in the you're in the gang, basically. Yeah. And he was he was proper buzzing. like He was ecstatic. And then we did it for a while. You dropped out eight early doors. Yeah. <laughs> I, remember thinking, I, remember, I remember like I could barely make my own mo- main channel videos. Yeah. And then it was like to do these extra videos. I was like. Yeah. But it was weird because I didn't ever feel like I never felt it was a it was a flop. But I never felt like we were a group. I no. never met you. No, I didn't know who <laughs> you were. No, yeah. I didn't know why. Obviously, I knew I was like inspired by you. But like, yeah, we'd never met. And I think that that element is vital. Yeah. You know, it just yeah. is. We did so after you dropped out, uh, you went and did the World Cup song. Yeah, we we met as a group at um, the YouTube studios, and I kind of was it dead. Yeah, was the no chemistry. It was funny. We all could put it on, but I just I was like, they aren't they aren't my kind of people. Really, Adam Waif and they might they're probably fine now because as I mean, we've grown up and yeah. stuff. But like Jake Boys, he was not my kind of person. Well, a bit Tory or like what? No, not Tory. Just like. Hello, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like old school YouTuber. I, I love Candy Floss. Like, I'm uh, so, I'm yeah, so yeah, random. Yeah. Like, Forward rolls yeah, and that, and I'm yeah. like, uh, get up off the floor. I'm so <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's just, I, I went. No. I'd never had good experiences with any of them, no. except Nick. I love Nick, mm. but and then and then Nick, obviously Sam King. Nick grew a following, and then got the job at Social Chain. I remember I was sat in my dad's flat in Fetford and Nick called me up and he had this job in social cha- at social chain in Manchester and he was like I might move to LA I was like what because you're just this little chubby kid that I thought was just always going to do that and he was like yeah I've got a couple of vine stars that I'm going to manage and I was like okay mate yeah go for it and he was like do you think I should I was like yeah sure and I put the phone down I remember thinking that's going to flop like, yeah. he's going to be back in two weeks after that and then he births fucking Jake Paul and Logan Paul's career which is mental. Actual mad. Yeah. Like, I remember seeing that when Nick Crompton was involved. I was like, <laughs> how does what? that come about? <laughs> yeah. Like, what's he doing now? Like, he, 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 he now has got a high up job for Universal. So he's managing people like Justin Bieber. Taylor and stuff. Swift. <laughs> Look at his face. Like, that's mad. Yeah. That is mad. But he's, fair play to him. He's got millions and millions of Instagram Re- followers. Oh, dollars as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did you see he had? A, he, he went to West Coast Customs and had his Hummer pimped really? out. Really? Yeah, <laughs> he's mad. And it mad. Was, the moment I found it was really weird is I I, I um, saw a TMZ video come up saying, asking Nick Crompton, and he's just walking down the street with these like Prada bags, and they're like, paparazzi in it it's well weird you i sometimes feel like i'm living in the truman show and this is mad yeah, like weird, because you know you cr- basically created the whole youtube boxing thing yeah i have a part to play in that as well because i was the first person to my knowledge to show that to eddie hearn and i don't know if you've ever seen the clip yeah but me and my old co-host yep. tom 
show him the press conference because yeah. I'm asking him, does he think it's fake? I saw that, yeah. So, because I didn't think the fight was fake, but I thought all the build up and that was yeah. 100% fake. And I was like, D- what do you reckon? And, he, and at the time, he's going, so is that one KSI? Is it our oh, Nash Joe Weller? And he didn't have a clue. And I remember looking at him and get, looking at Eddie Hearn in the eyes and going, I can see the dollar signs in your in your eyes. He's like, nah, that'll never that'll never take off. Yeah. And then he even makes a joke and go, who's putting all that on again? And now fast forward four years, he's running the whole thing. Yeah, it's that, mad. That, that, I think that is the like that's the bit not bitter thing, but that's the thing where I'm just like, if Hearn saw then what he obviously saw for the KSI and Logan fight, mm. that would have been cool. Yeah. Because I made a loss on my fight. Did you? I made a loss in money. What was it? Because what you were paying your trainers and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, or... yeah, obviously paying all of that. Like, but apparently JJ blocked like advertisers getting involved. And I don't know whether he got, had personal ones, mm. but for the actual event, we barely scraped like many thousands like at all. Who put that on? It was Upload and OP Talent. Oh, right. So it was like a combined thing. But yeah, we struggled to get advertisement. And apparently it was because our JJ's like how he was then with his, you know, the faces, mm. you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. Apparently that was the reason why advertisers didn't want to be involved. But I was like, surely not, mate. That's a bit old news. Yeah. And, but yeah, apparently, yeah, he just sort of, so he, he didn't want me to profit from it. Wow. That, apparently that that's what, I, you know, we have the same manager and that's sort of so like the, the vibe yeah, that was said. To this day, you didn't make much money from it then? Like, no, no, no. Obviously, like since, mm. you know, the videos I've made, about, I've made about 20 Logan Paul KSI videos. Yeah. You know, I have made money from it in, in the long run. Yeah. But in terms of the actual event, you know, when you see that JJ and Logan got paid $5 million. Yeah. It is, I mean, that's, they've earned that. Like, JJ defeated me to earn the, the ability to earn. That's a fair play. Mm. But that's the thing where you're like, if, you know, we did our event for free in terms of, like, we people didn't have to pay to watch. And at that point, I was like, I don't want to make people watch. We're not professionals. Mm. We're literally having a YouTube thing. This is YouTube and it should be for free. But like I was saying earlier about the whole being a bit more business savvy, maybe I should have gone, you know what? They got to pay a fiver to watch. You had an athlete head on, not a business head. Yeah, I had head. purely, I did not give a fuck about any of the money, whatever. I just mm. wanted to win. But if I did, then that could have been a nice little earner or at least made me break even. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you but, have any, are you, you were saying you're more business savvy now. Yeah. Do you have any like business ventures that you think you're going to go into or are you So just with gonna... Waffling, we are, we're doing something. Doing a tour? No. Well, maybe, but right. that's not the thing. So, you know... Christmas DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Little workout DVD. <laughs> um, well, we're, yeah, we're thinking of doing a club type thing. Oh, nice. Bit Maverick Club-esque. Mm. It won't be on a scale of Maverick Club, mm-hmm. but with the fan base that we have got, it is a very connected fan base, very active. Yeah. Like, and if we can do some sort of thing that's sort of almost like, like that intimate type exclusive club that yep. Maverick Club is like there could be some serious money in that yeah. and it's enjoyable because like what I'm doing already on like the waffling Instagram where I'm interacting with fans like pretty much on a daily basis like that's sick mm. but I can't get through everyone yeah. so imagine if we just like had the exclusive club and do fucking loads of other things we don't want to just do something that's a money earner we want to make it value Yeah, but there is potential in that and there is a potential you know potential to have a lot of money in it as well nice man so do an app or something maybe apparently apps a bit too costly at this point like maverick right. club is still a website oh okay um yeah we'd probably do it in that format we we are con- well currently in, in in contact with some developers and and all of that that are going to sort of help us mm. curate it nice um but yeah uh, that's, that's the sort of project that we're looking at at yeah. the moment sick let's talk a bit about waffling because um, we, we've kind of alluded to it throughout the show. Yeah. Obviously, it is it's your podcast. You do it with your mates Theo and Luke. You got it on your phone case yeah, there. Yeah. How long have you been doing it? You've been doing it. I reckon what? Just over a year. Just over a year. Just over a year. Yeah. How would you if I'd never seen the show well, before? This is probably perfect for me. So I have yeah. never listened to podcasts at all. Right. Doing this a year and a half. I only yeah. started listening to podcasts last month. Wow. And I started with that Peter Crouch podcast, which I've now finished. Right. So sell yours to me. Yeah. Sell it. So that so that yours can be the next one that I start listening to. Let's, let's say you have a minute. Right, so, uh, we're we're big investors. We can invest in this new Waffling membership thing, but you need to sell the sh- sell the show show to us. What is Waffling? You've got a minute. I'd literally say Waffling is a sex education. <laughs> 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 so it's a bit of a sex education, sort of adolescence e- education. 
<laughs> in between us in a podcast. Oh, nice. I'd sort of say that. Yeah. It's sort of, you know, being open and honest that we that we all fuck up. We're all shit at whether it be sex, nights out, talking to boys, talking to girls, you know, sexuality and just being a human being, right? We all have troubles with it. And I think what waffling is, is it gives the viewers a chance to sort of hear us lads mm. be honest yeah. about real experiences and fuck me, like the, the questions we get sent in as well. <laughs> like, people open up. People have, open up. Have you time. seen any of their video titles? Oh, God. <laughs> that's the thing, mate. That's waffling at the beginning. We used to do just clips. So we almost did like 10 minute videos. Yeah. And that was it. It wasn't like a full podcast. Yeah. And they banged more because you, we could put those sort of titles like, would you shag your cousin? Yeah. People, because obviously we got a question in. It was a complaint from someone's mum. Basically saying, I've had my son come up to me questioning his mum and dad. So her and her husband. Um, because we are cousins. And within our culture, it's the damn thing. And obviously, she was saying, I'm deeply enraged that you are mocking <laughs> our uh, our culture and all of this. So we sort of like reacted what? to it and died. <laughs> that is mental. When you... mate, no, it's actually the damn thing in some like cultures. Like, cousins. It's okay. <laughs> Got a bit waffling in it. But, like, do you know what I mean? Like, so that's basically what waffling is. We address these sort of things and... I fucking love it, mate. Sick. It is. It is so funny. I, was, I like the concept because it's mm. not often guys are honest either. But, that, but that's the thing as well. I think it's giving, making people not ever feel embarrassed or ashamed to have these questions or to have these sort of like problems. No matter, literally, no matter what it is. Yeah. So that's why, like, when you see the questions that come in, they are like so open and honest. And obviously, we don't tend to take the piss, but we also like, you know, the way the boys take the piss out of me, the way that we take the piss out of Theo and all that, we show that it's okay to have a laugh about these things. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not all, oh, if you've got a problem, oh, everyone has to sort of tread carefully. Nah, take the piss, have a laugh. Yeah, that's what you'd be doing with your mates yeah, off camera you know anyway. I mean? Exactly that. Yeah. So. It is good. I was saying to Joe, like, before we started, that it's the kind of podcast, because it's like just silly and you can have a laugh. It's sometimes deep, but like, you can listen to it and not really focus on it so sometimes like it's funny because I, I remember i was cooking and i don't often cook but i was like <laughs> chopping up these onions and it was on and uh, i was speaking to fiona and then it, it's just like you hear like what like come in your cousin and it's just like hang on i've just got to go just got to go back there and go back but it's funny i was i was watching one before and theo's reaction was exactly my reaction to you because you bring me up and you said <laughs> you said you're trying to explain what an atheist is and you go you know you know like what jack mate is and theo, <laughs> goes, and theo goes what why have you gone jack mate like well you had that merch Oh yeah, yeah, atheist yeah, merch. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, he did. <laughs> that was you embarrassing, made me wear wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, God. Yeah, that was embarrassing. You made me wear that around Norwich so you could take photos. Yeah, I, I'm deep. I deeply regret that. But the, it was because. Do you remember there was, um, there was a t- shirt in Top Man at the time, and I can't remember who it was. I think we've spoken about it on the podcast before, but there was a. There was somebody on a shirt and it said Jesus going across it. Oh, Maybe God. it was Jesus in a pair of sunnies or so something. You you actively are like I remember you you in your older videos you were actively like religion is fucking awful and all this stuff. And I remember like yeah. is this kid the devil? <laughs> this kid the I was like, has he been sent here by oh, I don't know. <laughs> the jury's still out on that. Wow. I think you're you're still very much there. You're I, just not as outspoken about it. I, I said this the other day, like so I, I I'm st- still of that belief that there's yeah. no God, but I've changed in opinion my opinion in terms of I don't give a shit if you are. Like yeah. I I listened to Bo Burnham, who's a comedian that we love. I listened to him about a year and a half ago on the H3 podcast, and he talks about how he used to be anti-religion, used to do songs about it, and then he got to a certain age where he was like, I don't care. And that was a year and a half ago, and my opinion was even different, because I remember thinking, well, at least stand up for what you believe in, or what you yeah. don't believe in. But now I'm just like, <laughs> just shattered all the time. I'm just like, I can't be, I can't be, are you religious? No, we're not, no, not religious. No, but... No. Y- but I don't. I don't go. There's a definite this or there's a definite that. Because like, who the fuck am I to know? Yeah, you know fair. What I mean, yeah. So, but you wouldn't class yourself as an atheist. I wouldn't say I'm an atheist. No. Really. I wouldn't say. I mean, spirits mm. are about. You know, there's a lot of different things that are unexplainable. Yeah. I'm open to talk and hear about it all. Yeah. But I'm not shutting down anyone. Mm. I think. So, I think what I've realised as I've got older, rather than 
despising religion or whatever. I think I've just realized that I don't like anyone who speaks and tries to force any one of their opinions on someone But then else. that's surely what I was doing. Yeah, so I so disliked you, you for what years. What you disliked about religion, you were doing about non-religion. Yeah. yeah. About atheism. Yeah, yeah so you so were a you preacher go. for yeah. atheism. There we go. Which is a bit stupid, isn't it? <laughs> 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 right, okay. I think before we finish... Um, we oh no 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 there was something else about waffling. Um, what's it like working with Theo and Luke? Sick, yeah, mate. We've had some arguments though. Don't have get, you? Don't get me wrong. Like obviously you boys have fallen out. Yeah, tell me you have. Oh yeah, we didn't speak for a few years. Like, uh, well, that was way before years. we started yeah. working together. Oh yeah. shit, oh, about yeah. six yeah. months. Was anyway. the... Yeah, uh, not really. No, but I, I didn't do anything. No, it was just somebody basically set, told me that he was a leech, and like the Crawford thing, I started to believe that he was like that. And then after a few years, because Fiona's always been like, he's absolutely fine. And I was yeah. like, he is fine. Like, I don't know why I thought that. So. Snake. Oh, well, I mean, at least you're friends now. Yeah. Uh, but whilst doing the podcast, right. has there ever been any beef? I no. I don't think so. What, has there been with you three? Yeah, but it's mostly come from me. Like, I've been the reason. Right. And it's because, like, obviously the transition from making YouTube videos to doing long-form content, at first, like, <laughs> it was, that's the reason why we did clips. Because I was like, I want this to be very concise. Yeah. No ramble. Yeah. Second, there's ramble. And this what would happen. Like, I'd be like, right, Sophia, this is the question. And his answer, if he's, yeah, like waffled at all, even though it's called waffling. <laughs> if he like waffled at all, I'd be like, no, mate, it's all right, it's starting again. Like, you need to fucking, I wouldn't be, I tried to like beat around the bush a little bit and be a little bit polite. But yeah. at the same time, what I was doing was, it was, unprod- it was doing the opposite of what I was intending. If I was trying to make him give a better answer, yeah. I should build him up, not be like, your shit, do better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's essentially what I was doing. So, yeah, there was that. And then... what? So, um, you, so you'd refilm the whole thing if he didn't give you the answer that you wanted to hear? No, not not the answer that I didn't want to hear. Yeah. It was more of just like, if, if we... The first... In a YouTube video, like the first minute is vital. Yeah. And I was like, if this first minute doesn't doesn't get into something interesting, mm. then I feel like we're limiting ourselves with you know re- retention and all that. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, if it, if we started off in a rambly sense, and it wasn't always him. If it, if it just as a group we didn't start off well, I'd just be a lot more like, nah, do it again. Wow, nah, do it again. And that and pissed him off, I guess. Well, yeah. Well, it was more of just like. Yeah, it, it's that thing of like me essentially being a bit of a narcissist, like thinking I'm better than everyone. Right. And that's, that's yeah. And I, I have tendencies to do that. Yeah. With, with creativity as well, because I have these visions of like, this is how it's got to be. Yeah. It's a lot like, are you ever like that when you have like the people working with you? If someone's not, in your opinion, up to scratch, mm. are you ever, do you ever get frustrated with them? Yeah, I feel like sometimes I'll show Fiona something that I think's funny yeah. or good. And if she questions it, I'll get annoyed at her. I'll be mm. like, well, what are you on about? When it's like people can have different opinions. So mm. with you and being like the, the champion of your own sort of content, did you ever get to the point where you could never film outside of your normal place? So basically when I did a series, it would have to be there like yeah. that. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. hated during lockdown that we went in this studio. Yeah. So I could have done it remotely with you and had the same show. Yeah. But I was like, no, it has to be yeah. here. It has to look the part, feel the part and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, for me, yeah, same. Like, it's almost that perfectionist sort of like thing. But that's that whole perfectionist nature has become very the opposite of productive. What's that? Counterproductive. Yeah. Um, for me, because I, obviously in that video I made where I was saying, ending this now, being the old Joe Weller, all of that. Mm-hmm. I said about... I always do these retakes. Yeah. Yo, guys, so... I oh, know, I can do that better. All right, guys, so... No, nah, no, nah, I'm not feeling it. And then I almost overdo it and I overdo the retakes where I end up making nothing and then I hate the process and I never want to do it. Right, yeah. And, um, yeah, when I started like noticing that coming in with waffling a little bit, that's like, nah, that's not what it's about. And the boys, are obviously, yeah, they sit me down like, Joe, this is not what it's about. Like, you need to enjoy this. Number one thing is our friendship. That's mm. what makes waffling what it is. But I will say as well... Um, doing waffling remotely that fucked it yeah that fucked it in terms of that made me hate it i didn't like doing that yeah and um yeah like i hated it as well it didn't work no 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 (laughs) i I wouldn't be surprised no no, i i i can't i I will admit i didn't listen to as many of them when it was like that but for the same reason that i had this like Mm. you don't know when to talk you can't read people's yeah it's like the flow is missing yeah yeah Yeah, so and and then you did the comeback one of you sat in by the coast wasn't it yeah and then fucking had the mics that 
clipped. Yeah. Like, I had the levels wrong. Yeah. That's why you wear headphones. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, like that's, uh, so that messed up. So once we got back in the studio, that's when right, I know we got good audio. Yeah. We're in the place where the magic happens. Like there's something about that room, like you were saying, yeah. where we just, we find things funnier. Yeah. And all of that. And um, yeah, since coming back, like the views once again are going up, the interactions are going up, the likes are going up, yeah. Instagram's popping, like waffling is on the rise, mm. and it gasses me. Yeah, it's like we're building something special. But um, nice. Yeah. What's Luke? What's his story? He's just a, some guy. Nah, he's, like, <laughs> he's our mate from school. You met him at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Costa mate. <laughs> but, um, so he's our mate from school. Right. Like just like Theo. Uh, in fact, me and Luke were more friends than me and Theo at school. Oh, so all three of you went to the same school? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, all friends since school. So it was in our my actual group of friends, Luke was part of that. Theo, I'll uh, be honest, was more part of the nerds. <laughs> 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 no, I didn't mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Which camera that one? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but he was. Yeah. Very Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he's apologised and straight away gone. Massive fucking nerd. Very Star Wars. I lo- <laughs> Took a lightsaber to school for lunch. <laughs> Not to eat for lunch. No, I mean to use it on his lunch. Mate. Yeah. Oh, so, dear. Um, he's just sort of like, I don't know. But as he's gotten older, he started help- helping me with videos. Yeah. Like originally, Theo was like a bit of a cameraman for me. Yeah. Which was good. And then he got the old, oh. I could do this for myself. Yeah. <laughs> and he actually went with it and put in the work and has made something of it. Yeah. Um, so did you ever start to like question him or like, like, did you have, ever have any kind of animosity towards him for like, oh, why are you starting to do YouTube? This is my thing. No, and, I was like, yeah. I, I encouraged him. Did you? I was like, mate, why are you working at Mackey's? He's yeah. working at McDonald's. When you have this opportunity in front of you to do YouTube, you like making videos. Like he used to do like holiday videos and shit. Yeah. So um, I was like, mate, go for it. So he did, and that was sick, and I was like, yeah, that was class. The only thing that I've ever had a problem with anyone that I've helped is, I'm like, if they start using my name loads in the title yeah, and start just using me as a way to grow their channel just completely, uh, without showing that they're also doing their own thing. Yeah. And yeah, there was a little, actually, when we started doing waffling again, like when we started waffling and me and Theo started hanging around more, he started doing that. Yeah. Started whacking Weller in like a lot of the titles. Right. But if I started in the video at all and I was like, mate, that's no. Yeah. Like that's yeah. that what you're doing, what fucking, you, that's Elliot vibes. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, you're not that. Regarding like obviously Luke, the reason why he is so good, like I said on with you guys, mm. um, having that individual that's not YouTube based, that's not wanting to pursue a career at all mm. in the entertainment industry, like he's studying to be a lawyer at uni right now. Right. Um, and yeah, having him on the podcast, like originally he was there to just be almost like a producer role. Yeah. So just making sure things like the camera angles, like what Fiona's doing right now, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but he'd be off camera, but he like he'd chip in with like funny comments. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and that was sick. But he was like, I don't want to be on camera. Like, I don't feel comfortable. So we had that dynamic. But as you can imagine, for the viewers, it was a bit annoying when like there's yeah. this random. I voice. remember watching it for ages, thinking, who, wh- why is he? Yeah. Who is he? Like, yeah, yeah. So that yeah, that's always been Luke. But um, as well, he was there. He had to be there because. Just me and Theo on our own didn't create the same magic. Right. That sounds a bit dodgy. Yeah. But like, <laughs> as in, it wasn't like, the vibe wasn't as funny. Yeah. Whereas there's something about that Luke kid that's just like, he just makes shit funny just from being there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you have people in like your friendship group that oh, are like no, that. No, no, you, I think a, a, a three is way better than a two because yeah. even if like, we now start to take the piss out of Stevie, there's that dynamic yeah. and then you might turn around and take the piss out of me. Yeah. And if, if you went in this room right now and I'd be going, oh yeah, you're a fucking nerd. It'd just and be then, bullying. And me. then it's just, yeah, <laughs> then it's just weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so literally that and now Luke's like on camera and we're a thing and yeah, it's sick. Yeah. Like, so long live waffling yeah class waffling on youtube and uh, audio platforms and yeah, stuff check it that. out check <laughs> it out right twitter questions then a few hypotheticals cool because I, I like seeing the brains of certain people and i want to get into your brain mm-hmm. right twitter questions alfie this sounds like a made-up name right i thought you were gonna say alfie Andrew. no i've just seen it it sounds like a made-up name alfie jack okay Don't it's not it's not me and alfie like a little croatia player <laughs> <laughs> He's nippy on the wing. Um, <laughs> nippy on the wing. <laughs> what was the original reason? Oh, we might have covered this, but what was the original reason for starting waffling? The first day you made one. Therapy. Yeah. The reason is because there was an opportunity 
uh, in terms of like I I know when we all speak, me, Luke, and Theo, we have good chats. But it was mostly because like. I wanted to practice talking on camera because I lost that ability. I lost confidence on camera. Mm. So just speaking it once a week or whatever, just like it got shit out. Mm. It, it, you know, I was fucking lonely, mate. I live alone. Sounds like, you know, mm. but it's true. And having the boys come around and being productive with it was, yeah, that was beneficial. So more than anything, like waffling is built on a genuine like help for me. Right. And the boys, because Theo was feeling low at that point as well. Yeah. Um. Luke obviously wasn't in initially meant to be involved in a big way, but yeah, that's what it is. I'd say therapy. Nice. What it is. And I think from an outsider's point of view, I think it seems like it's helping you. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Okay. There's there's two here. I think you've answered this one from one to ten. How how much from the heart was it when you called Jack a fucking twat? <laughs> that was probably like fifteen now. <laughs> From the heart, what do you, do you reckon that came through like proper cynical? I thought it was real. I was trying to be. Pu- I was. Well, trying it was to... real. It was real. No, I thought like you well, genuinely. You thought I actually hated him. Yeah. Oh no! See, that was me just trying to. I was really trying to deliver the roast. I wanted to be like, I want this is going to be the big biggest roast. Not funny. I mean, it wasn't funny, but it yeah. was more like I want this to actually be like believable. It yeah. was. <laughs> yeah. No, it, <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> yeah, and I found out today that down. it came from the heart. So did it actually, like, did it affect you at all? No, no, no. Did I'm it make very, you think like well as a prick. No, no, no. I'm very thick skinned, and I kind of already knew that you thought like that of me back then. Mm-hmm. So it's like I, oh, um, I hope that he doesn't think that now. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that was his opinion once upon a time. Yeah. 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 So who's a oh, who's mm. a better co? I, I'm going to throw another one in. Actually, I've been bottling it, but I'm going to do it. Who's a better co-host, Theo or Luke? Well, they're just like different individuals, mate. Like, <laughs> no, 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 wait. At the end of the day, like, I'll be honest. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, definitely Luke. Sometimes, like the last episode, Theo, he was on fire, mate. Rinsed me. Right. Rinsed me. And it was like, you're sick. The comments were actually like, Theo's actually funnier than Weller. And I was like, right then. Um, um, you're <laughs> off the podcast, Theo. <laughs> I'll get rid of him. Um, but yeah, but honestly, waffling doesn't work without all three of us. Like, it just doesn't. Yeah. I've tried. We have, we've tried. Yeah. We've actually experimented and it don't. Right. So those boys, they're both vital. Okay, sweet. Um, rate the side men in preference. Oh, Best God. to worst. Best to worst at what? At how you like at being them. a person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Not> me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, do you know what I mean? It's just like um, at being a person. Nah, like at the end of the day, one, mm. I don't fucking know them well enough. How do you not? I don't, mate. I've been on a few holidays with them. Mm. But like, how well someone can smash... Gi- no. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll move on to the hypothetical question. <laughs> yeah, like, I, yeah, I mean, I think... And this is actually, going back to your old videos. Yeah. One of my big issues were you would slate someone, yeah. meet them in real life, and then be like, oh, they're actually all right once you get to know them. I'm like, well, why are you slating them? Oh, no, I don't, think, I don't think I did do that. I think, I think you did. Do you? Yeah, that's what it was. It was like, you'd slate these people, but you'd only slate people that you don't know. And I'm like, he doesn't even know them. No, because I'd always I'd always judge them. I, well, I hope I'd always judge them for what they'd actually done rather than as a person. So one thing I was quick to backtrack on with the Alfie Day stuff mm. is when I mugged off his content. Because yeah. like, it's not for me anyway. Yeah. But like their actions, I still stand by like they've done muggy stuff. So Casper yeah. Lee, like he's welcome on the podcast whenever he wants. That doesn't mean I think he's like an A-OK person. Yeah. So it would be a case of like, so Josh Peters, yeah. I thought he was a dick because we had a bit, of, we had a clash. Yeah. But when I met him, I was like, I'm actually, that's one of the times when I'm like, I'm actually surprised at how similar to me he is. Yeah. And whether he wants to admit that or not, me and Josh, like I reckon me, you and Josh could go on a night out and have a proper laugh. Mate, he pulls loads of birds. Yeah, because he's good looking South African. Yeah, I remember the first time, because he well, didn't do YouTube when I first met him. He was just Casper Lee's mate. Yeah. Fucking hell. Like they, like Casper is like, oh mate, watch him. I'm telling you, he's going to, he'll pull whoever he wants. He just does. Really? Josh Peters. Lad. Dark horse. <laughs> that yeah. is, mate. And now, like, the only thing I had over him, I was like, shit, YouTuber, great person. And now it's like... <laughs> great YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking cunt. Yeah. Um, okay. We're not rating them? Ideally not. Okay. Ideally not. Who's your top three? How about that? That's nice. <laughs> not as per- as people, I'm not going to rate them. I'll rate them as YouTubers. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, as YouTubers yeah. in terms of content. Yeah. Um, fuck, I don't watch any of their videos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want uh, I don't watch any... Mate, do you watch any YouTube 
I watch. Um, I could probably name about five that I watch. Yeah. Nick or Milana. Yeah. Wafflin. Yep. Ed Game Face, that yep, that up and coming guy I told okay. you about. Yeah. And then probably Joe Rogan four. And Rob- they're not really YouTubers. You watch Robbie. Really? Who? Oh, and Robbie Knox, well, my like mate Alfie Robbie Knox. Indra. Um. He's, oh, he's not really a YouTuber. I wouldn't class him as a YouTuber. Really? No, he just does them like Theo Baker. silly songs. No. Why? <laughs> what do you mean, why? Because <laughs> he, he's yeah, a man. nerd who hangs around with Star Wars he's characters. Not fucking, he's not a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about my friend like that. <laughs> he's a great guy. We're not going to rate the side, then. Fuck your question off. Uh, <laughs> hypothetical questions. Okay, right, let's go. I've got three. Okay. First of all, I'll do one that Alfie asked. If you were stuck on a raft outside of a, you're like on a desert island, you're stuck on a raft, and Ariana Grande's on there, and your mum, and you can only save one, but the one you have to save, no, the, don't say the that. one you save, you have to sleep with. See you later, mum. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, mate. Well, fuck me. Yeah, but then you don't have a mum. Yes. I ain't doing that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, I ain't, bruv. I realistically think about it. What were you doing then? You're shaking your mum? Is that what you're doing, mate? I don't really get on with my mum, so she's gone early doors. But oh. if it was my dad, <laughs> then no. Uh, but all right, if I put someone awkward in it, like my sister, you're probably right. See you later. Yeah. yeah. I mean, probably. It definitely is right. Yeah, like, but, then, but, but then, yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. But then I am from Norwich. And <laughs> <laughs> and it is a case of she's dead now because of me. Yeah, but then you'd also have the whole world hating you for having killed Ariana Grande. That, I think that would cause some serious trauma. Like, mate, if you have to do that with your mum, like, mm. do you know what? Think about it, mate. Yeah. Like, right now, if it's like, right, now you've got to go out there and do that. Yeah, it would be pretty bad. It'd be all right for her. She wouldn't remember it. She'd be pissed. But, uh, <laughs> oh, God. The next one. <laughs> Look at the way he's looking. <laughs> She's an alcoholic. Uh, bag. You have a bag of balls. Who's <laughs> the bag? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, God. Yep. A bag of balls. A uh, hundred balls in the bag. Right? They're all the same size. Imagine there's a hundred ping pong balls in there. Mm-hmm. 99 of them are blue. Yeah. One of them's red. Okay. You have to be blindfolded. You have to take a ball out. If you get a blue ball, you win a million pounds. Yeah. If you get the red ball, you die. You get stage four terminal illness, right? Would you take a pick for a million? And if you would, you can have as many goes as you want. But as soon as you get that red one, game over. Would you Would you take a dip in the bag? <laughs> Give it a go. <laughs> Give it a go, mate. Would you? Well, this is the thing. Like, this is why I've taken up a lot of like extreme activities. Because I'm at a point now where like that exhilaration, that adrenaline, like, I need that yeah. in order to engage me in whatever I'm doing. Right. So I, I just view that as like an extreme sport. Let's go for it. At the end of the day, it's probably one in a hundred that you could have gone that I could have gone down this morning when I was paragliding. Yeah. I reckon so. You're right. So I reckon I'd go for one go and that was it. And I reckon I'd I'd win. Yeah, you yeah. get get the, get the milli. I'd do four or five. Really? I welcome death. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, what 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 are your views on it? Like death. Oh, topic here. Don't go into this because pretty bad. Really? Yeah. So I have OCD and okay. I have um, like an extreme health anxiety disorder. So oh. I I have this thing where like ten times a day my head will convince me that I'm terminally ill. So it's like a proper bad like. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's proper bad. So I, I I've like opened up to Fiona loads of times when I've been smashed. Um, but like I I have this I have these certain things in life where I can't. So, for example, like, we'll, me and Alf will be in the pub and there'll be, like, a sign and it'll say, like, oh, testicular cancer or something. Like, check check for lumps or whatever. Yeah. And when I was younger, I found a lump. So, I was, I was it traumatised me. I remember I went to, like, the doctors and the hospital and that. Turned out to be fine. But now it's given me this, like, mental condition where before that, I had OCD anyway. So, I had a picture of my granddad on the wall. I told this on the podcast. I couldn't go to sleep at night without kissing it 13 times. 13's my lucky number. If I didn't do that, I thought it, I'd wake up and he'd be dead. So I had all these like things, but then after the lump, it turned into health anxiety where 10, 15 times a day, I'll just, my mind will just go off. And for a minute or two, it's like really quick bursts, I will be convinced that I'm going to die. So like there'll be, I could be driving home tonight and then I'll be like, my brain will get, I'll start getting these conscious thoughts of, oh, you better, um, 
like you better see your nan and granddad tomorrow because then you ain't got much after that and then and then i'll be like what and then it'll come to the forefront i'll go oh, fuck i just got that thing again i've woken up in the middle of the night before because it's not always about me as well so I, i've woken up in the middle of the night before and i've turned over and i've looked at fiona and i have thought oh she's gonna die and that's mad mm. but i've woken her up and gone you should really get a, like a blood test tomorrow. And she's like, what? What are you on about? I'm like, you just need to get a blood test. You need to get... And I've woken up in the morning and gone, sorry, I don't know what that was about. It's just my head. So yeah, I have this really weird thing with death, which I think yeah. I've spoken about on the podcast before, but I've never kept in the video. Yeah. It's honestly, mate, like opening up in that sense, like it's powerful. Yeah. And just hearing you say that, like, yeah, like that is mad. And w- would you say like, in terms of mental health, mm. like, is there any other things that you feel maybe you do suffer with yeah yeah um well just because of that like sometimes i I, i've never i would never ever say that i've got depression because i know that's a serious thing and like people that have depression but 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 have you ever felt depressed yeah i felt depressed but only because of the back off the back of that so alfie has been on the podcast before who's obviously one of my best mates now and he he, he's spoken about um he has a really bad ocd um which is called retroactive jealousy disorder so um he needed to actively seek out sexual things that his current partner's done and it would make him feel so jealous and horrible that he's broken up with um he's broken up with girlfriends in the past because he's had to find out every detail and he's told this on the podcast so i can tell it again but because of the intrusive thoughts which are what i get he gets them over and over and over again he's actually suffocated himself with a belt three times to the point where he's passed out. And then the third time when it was so bad, he called up the hospital. And now he does therapy sessions every week on Skype. So he's constantly saying to me, like, you need to do therapy sessions. You need to do therapy sessions. It feels good talking about it because at the moment I've gone in this routine where I'll get fucked every weekend. And then I'll speak to Fiona about it when I'm fucked because it's the only time I can bring myself to like open yeah. up about it. But because I found that lump, when I think... I always like describe it to people as like when I've told Alfie or Fee that I was like, oh yeah, I always worry that I have cancer, but it's specifically testicular cancer that Mm. I think I have. And this is mad. You probably know this, but I haven't been able to like look or touch that part of my body for about 12 years. For real? Yeah, big time. So even like sexually? Sexually, no. It's like, don't touch there. Like you can't do it. And Fiona and like other people have said like, you need to go to the doctors and get it sorted. Because the thing is, if I went to the doctors and they said, oh, you don't have this illness, mm. you're absolutely fine, I reckon all my troubles could go. Because I could be like, well, there we go. I don't have it. In my head right now, that from the moment I fa- found it, I've had that illness the whole time. And it's like, just like, yeah, so it's just like getting worse and worse. And that's why I'm so anti-deaf. So like whenever anyone talks about death, I'm like, I don't want to hear it. We had my mate Robbie Knox on the podcast. He spoke about when he found a lump. And then he went... He went, oh, yeah, yeah, you can't fuck about with that. He was like, if you get a lump down there, you've got to go to the doctors. And I went all white, and I could feel myself get, yeah. getting a bit faint. And I was mm. like, oh, let's just change the subject. Let's just change the subject. Mm. So, yeah, it's fucking, it's mad. Fair but, enough, yeah, man. if there is anyone out there that's suffering with health anxiety, then I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that one, and it is pretty shit, yeah. But it's weird because there, there was that trigger. So that trigger kind of, yeah. I can look back at that and go, it was that. Like, mm. right now, talking about it, I know it doesn't make sense. But later on tonight, I'll convince myself it does again. For sure. Well, anyway, no. let's pick up the mood again. Yeah, <laughs> we're, no. We're, we're, no, but just, I mean, just to end, like, just to conclude that, like, yeah. would you ever consider talking to, like, a professional? I don't think I could talk to, right now, I don't think I'm in the position where I could talk to a doctor, like a medical professional, where they're, like, a doctor, like a physical doctor who would look there and go, no, you're fine, or give me a blood test. Yeah. Because I worry that it's going to come back and not have the answer that I wanted. Mm. But I think I would speak to a therapist about it and go, why do I have this constant thought in my head? Although I feel like their answer is, just speak to a doctor and then you'll be fine. But I can't... I don't reckon it would just be speak to a doctor. No. But like speaking for me, like obviously I've had different like, you know, issues. But speaking to that Believe in Bruce Mm. guy, I don't know if you've seen. Mm. But like, obviously he's helped me so much and I was so like, there's not, there's nothing a, therapist can do or anyone else can do that i haven't already thought of myself yeah like that's how i used to always think but um so yeah, you'd mate, recommend one mate without a doubt bro really like that if you think about it do you do you want to look back and go that that side that ate me up like in my brain for a long like for like so much of my life mm. like do i want to look back and say oh i didn't even try to like do something about it mm. or knowing that realistically like if we're realistic and logical there is probably a way that can help you deal with it better. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. It's true. Just, yeah. Just 
you know what I mean? And it does take, and that's the thing, like when it's something like that, it's like often what you want to do is just fucking don't think about it. Yeah. Don't fucking think about it. Mm. But the only way to make that progress is to go head on and go, right, we're going to address this. We're going to fucking deal with this mm. because I need to, because I want to live a happy life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's what I had to do with my depression. And it's still, it's still a daily battle. Mm. I'm not cured of depression. I'm right. not cured of anxiety. It's still a daily thing that I have to, you know. Um, do, you, do you have days where you, where you think about it less or you feel better? Or is it just a constant level? Yeah, so basically, like, if I'm doing things, i.e. this morning, paragliding, coming up here and filming, I'm fine, I'm class. If anything, I feel like I've got my shit together. Yeah. But obviously living alone... And spending a lot of time on my on my own, hmm. um, yeah, man, it, it can come in big time. Like I I got addicted to caffeine because it was like a sense of you have caffeine, you're up, you're high, you're hyped, boom, smash a gym workout, do all of that, um, and I'd feel alright. Boom, another coffee, another coffee, pro uh, whatever pre workout. Hmm. But recently, like, like that got to a point where it caused me so much angst and stress that that was that fucked me as well like mm. i would so i would have come here and on the way here been like so almost like terrified really like that's where from having so much caffeine that's what it would have done wow whereas i like, instead like now that i've been like i'm, I'm clean <laughs> <laughs> like yeah like i'm calm like i'm all right yeah but um but the thing is without that like caffeine hyping me up it's got me a little bit more like oh i'm deep in shit a little bit more really yeah like a little bit yeah i'm a bit more just like Mm, I don't like making any videos. And that that's that is that's my thing that always comes back in. It's like I don't like making videos and I need to make videos. I've just signed a deal with bulk powders that involves making videos. I've just signed UFC. Yeah. Like, I've just signed a big twelve month deal with the UFC, mate. Wow. Huge, amazing opportunity. Yes, amazing. Yeah. But in the back of my mind I'm like, they're gonna want me to make YouTube videos. Yeah. And playing the game. Fuck. And it's just like, oh shit. Yeah. And it's like, how do I you might not, yeah, you might not feel up for it one so, day. Well, it, well, it's not even just like feeling up for it one day. It's like, it's just knowing that like, I don't, I don't really like, I'm not passionate about making YouTube vids. So it's like, now I'm signed into it. <laughs> wow. Guess. What do you do? I know we went on to that silly shit, but what do you do? That was silly, bro. That wasn't silly. That's good shit. Yeah. Like talking, honestly, like talking about that is like, it's good. What does Wella do day to day when you're not making YouTube videos? Like you live on your own. So what, what are you doing? Work out, exercise, cycle, gym, cycle, gym. Constantly. I like, made that. Yeah. Well, it's when I'm sitting about, it's when I'm sitting about that I start to like feel like a dosser, become a dosser. Yeah. Scrolling through Instagram. That's the killer as well. Just yeah. scrolling through social media. To toxic as hell. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's why I keep my, myself busy. Like, exercising do you uh, do you go out at the weekends do you drink yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah we yeah we smash it yeah um and that's been you know that is good mm. but at the same time like the, the hangover yeah and all of that yeah that can then lead you to feeling even more deep about things yeah and uh yeah it's weird it's it weird, weird yeah we're in similar situations i think mate yeah. to be fair but yeah all good um slug <laughs> Slug question? We go from do all we? that to uh, I got a question about a killer slug. <laughs> right, well, why don't we just do the final final question? No, we'll finish on it because I want to finish on a happy hour. We finish on a jokey thing. Okay. Right? So you have this little slug, right? Little tiny slug. It's always been a snail. Snails then, right? Can I say a slug? I like the idea of it there. Um you have a little slug and it follows you around. Yeah. If it touches you, have you heard this before? I think I saw it on Twitter. If it touches you, you die instantly. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? So there's a killer s snail yeah. chasing after you. Yeah. I can give you, let's say, ten million pounds right mm. now, mm. and then you're you're locked into this battle essentially with this killer snail. If it catches you and touches you, you die instantly. Mm. You can go anywhere, do what you want, but no ma matter what, it's chasing you at the speed of a snail. But it can get across water and whatnot, so that it can get to you. Yeah. So for the rest of your life, you'd be looking around for this snail because yeah. if you go and move to Australia, it it's going to get there eventually. But it'll have to travel there, and it'll but, take time. Yeah, but you'll never know when it's going to suddenly pop up. It could touch you whilst you're asleep. Yep. So would you would take, you the, take the money, or would you? How just much money is it? Ten, 10 mil. mil. Ten mil. And you can't trap the snail out under a little bucket. Do you know what? Uh, probably because I think you could calculate. Um, you can calculate the speed at which a snail travels. Go, right, Australia, let's go. It's start, the snail's currently in England. How long is that going to take for a snail 
to make it to Australia. A few months, all right, we'll do that. Then we'll go elsewhere. Then we'll go elsewhere. It is for the rest of my life, right? Yeah. Yes. That's the only dodgy thing because there's going to be a point where you want to settle down. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I'm going to make 10 million anyway. That's the, that's the mentality I need to have. I'm going to make it anyway. Yeah. Do you believe you're going to make it anyway? Yeah, maybe not 10 million. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, the thing I, is, I like at this rate, like, I mean, on paper, I'm not scheduled to make 10 million, but like, yeah. You'll be comfortable. It'd be, it'd be good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think I'd rather have the, men- the mentality, look, I'm going to go and earn that myself. If UFC's do another 12 months, then you'll yeah. be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no. Bun the snail. Bun right. Off, mate. What oh. are you doing? What are you doing? I wouldn't take it either. No. No, I'm scared of death already. I don't need <laughs> yeah. another little snail coming for yeah. me. It's, it's basically like, do you want constant anxiety? It's yeah. always going to be in the back of your head, that thing of like, snails coming. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd take it. it. That is the most reason, like the most rationale everyone, anyone's ever given to that answer. Do you know what I mean? Like examples like, yeah, it's fucking take the 10 mil straight away. But Joe was like, work out the speed of the snail <laughs> and the distance. And yeah, no, it's good. I think we'll leave it there. Before we do, I like to ask all the guests in season four, you being the second guest. <laughs> Joe, um, what is the meaning of life? As told by Joe Weller. It's the journey. That's what it is. It's not the end it's not the end result of all the things that you're going for or you're trying to achieve. It's the journey along the way. And I think that is what the meaning of life is. It's not the moment you die and the moment you're born that you're born. It's the, everything in between. Perfect. And everything else you do, all these little things, the goals that you're chasing, if just the end product is all you're thinking about, then you'll never get that. Toxic. Yeah. It's the journey and that's the like me with videos like you and whatever you're doing. Like that's what you need to focus on enjoying the most the journey. So, yeah. w- what a great answer. And I think that sums up this podcast because it has been a journey. We've yeah. gone to places that I haven't been before on the pod. Um first time really meeting, yeah. Yeah. I knew I'd love you and I do bloody love you. Joe Weller, thanks for coming on the pod, mate. Thanks for having me. This has me. been Jack Mate's Happy Hour and I'll see you next week. Boom. Oh Perfect. my god. Smashed it. Like I have that. never been this hot. Okay. Smashed it. Smashed it.